2023 is now beginning. I'm calling it to order. Um, as we begin this meeting, it's important to pay respect to and acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the Ohlone, Costanoan, and Esalen people, and additionally pay respect to elders, both past and present. Mandy, can you do a roll call, please? President Swanson? Here. Clerk McNary? Here. Dr. Hazen? Here. Trustee Otmar? Here. Trustee Brian Swanson? Here. Interim Superintendent Jorn? Here. Thank you. Thank you. We definitely have a quorum. We have all of our members, our trust, members of trustees here. Um, next up is adoption of the agenda. Do we have any public comment on the adoption of the agenda? Lewis, are you seeing any digital hands? I'm not either. Anyone here in public wanting to comment on the agenda? Okay, seeing none. Can we get a motion to adopt the agenda, please? I'll move I'll to adopt the agenda. But Mandy? It was me. Sorry, I just got confused. Okay, go ahead, Brian. Uh, yeah, I'll move to adopt the agenda. Um, point of order, are we going to, the does the agenda currently include the addition of the out of county item? It does, and it was it was submitted before the timeline. Cool, because we're a twenty four hour deadline with the special meeting timing. Thank you for clarifying. Okay, good question. Um, since we're talking about trustee questions, do any trustees have a question about the agenda? No. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so there's a motion on the floor. Brian made the motion. I'm happy to second. Elliot second. So uh, trustee Brian made the motion, and trustee Dr. Hazen has seconded. Um, can we get a majority vote, please? In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Mandy. Motion carries unanimously. <clears throat> Next up, action discussion. Approval of the 2022-23 unaudited actuals financial report. And Mr. Jordan, this is your item. Uh, point of order, do we do consent prior to action? I don't have consent on my agenda. Oh, you have you don't have the revised agenda. Hold on. Let me get <laughs> yeah, the revised. Well, no problem. Thank you. Okay. Consent agenda. We have one item on the consent agenda. Consent item A. Yes, just one item. Um Since these are routine items, I'm just looking for the vote for the consent. I don't see it on the agenda, but uh, so for the consent agenda, can we, I'm lost because I don't have it, but I think we need to go out to public comment for it. Um, so we're gonna go out to public comment right now and see if there's any public comment on consent items. And again, we have consent item A, it's out of county or overnight activities. Seeing no digital hands, and I don't see anyone in person making their way up to the podium, we'll close out public comment. And um, trustees, do you have any discussion regarding consent? I do have a question. Okay. I think it was the first time in my years on the board that we've only had one item on consent, but um, we have one adult and six students and it's a car. So do we have we have any details on that? It seems like a lot of people in one car. Mr. Know? Sure. Um, this is the golf team. And it's huh? uh, the one adult is the adult from the, the high school. As I understand it, some of the students are going to be transported by their parents as well. Okay. Yep. All right. So yeah, and I and just a quick point of order, right? We would normally not have consent agenda at a special board meeting uh because the this is a league match and the coach didn't get it in on time for the cutoff for the 21st, which is when the event is going to take place we added it today got it all right so unusual that's all obviously it would be absurd to pull it uh so but thank you for answering that appreciate it thank you and i do feel like since i asked for trustee questions i should just double check there's no public questions because i feel like we always go to the public after we have our own discussion so Lewis, and if there's anyone online in the public who would like to comment please do raise your digital hand we would love to hear from you 
Okay. We're not seeing anyone online who would like to comment and I don't see anyone in person either. So with that, can we get a motion to approve? I'll move to approve consent. Thank you. Motion made by Trustee Brian. I'm happy to second. Seconded by Clerk McNary. Mandy, can you do, I'm assuming a majority vote on this one. It's not on the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Mandy. Okay, moving on to action discussion, which is the approval of the 22-23 unaudited actuals financial report. And Mr. Jordan, this is your item. This is my item. Thank you very much. Let me get my uh, share my screen here with you. Okay, so first, before I start today, I want to recognize and pay tribute to our entire business office. So nothing is done in a vacuum or in a silo in our business office. Uh, our fiscal officer, Angela Rodriguez, and executive admin assistant, Carly Adams, uh, put a lot of work into preparation of the unaudited actuals. Uh, it's a coordinated effort with our accounts payable team as well, uh, Phyllis Lewis. And prior to uh, preparing your unaudited actuals for the 22-23 year, there are hundreds of journal entries that have to take place, um, revenue deferrals. There's there's a lot that goes into even uh, adjusting things within our financial management system escape before there is an upload into SACS. So um, I just wanted to note that today that just we have an amazing staff and I wouldn't be able to function and do my job on a daily basis without the staff that we have, uh, as well as the teachers and administrators that support us. Um, but I really wanted to pay tribute today to our fiscal team because there's a lot of work that goes into this. We close the books at the end of July, July 31st. And um, again, one month is really not enough time to do all of the front end work before uploading this uh, into our SAC software at the state level and then bringing it to you for approval and then to, to the county office. So I just wanted to open with that. You've seen this slide before. I'm just gonna go through it really quickly. We are on report uh, number two. This is our 23, 24 budget cycle report one. We've already approved the budget back in June. We have our unaudited actuals from 22-23, and then you will see me again uh, bringing forward the first interim report in December of 15. The first interim report, of course, uh, any of the changes that were um, that resulted in the unaudited actuals, and there were substantive changes, I'll go through them tonight, uh, those will be uh, reflected in a, uh, a newly adopted budget or first interim uh, in December. Oops. Okay. Uh, this is the slide that shows the district general fund. Of course, it's restricted and unrestricted combined. Again, talking about 22-23 and where we closed our beginning fund balance at the beginning of 22-23 in the adopted budget was uh, five, just over 5,900,000 uh, in unrestricted and restricted to just a little over 2.5 million for a combined of just under 8.5 million. Um, we had an operating surplus, uh, sorry, or deficit in the unrestricted of 146,588, and on the restricted side, uh, we had a surplus, and the two of them balance out to a surplus of 799,227 uh, for the ending of 2223. You can see here the effect on unrestricted and restricted ending fund balance at the end there on the last column on the right, just over 9 million in combined uh, unrestricted restricted general fund. As you can see, there's a lot of restricted funds that rolled over, and I'll get into the why here in just a few minutes. Okay, we've seen this slide many times before, um, but uh, I want to go through it really quickly with you. So net revenues for us increased um, in 22-23 uh, by about uh, 1.1 million, just over 1.1 million net revenues. So those re net revenues are restricted and unrestricted combined. 601,000 of the net revenues was an increase due to lo local property taxes. Uh, the other 550-ish thousand dollars is due to um, our P2 restricted revenues. So in April, we receive our P2 apportionment, and some of the revenues came in much higher than anticipated. But also, um, we don't make it a habit of budgeting for revenues, right? So in the 22-23 adopted budget, there were certain revenues that just were not budgeted yet because they weren't received. We'll budget the expenditures, but we don't usually budget the revenues until they come in. So that uh, that nets out to just over $1.1 uh, net expenditures only slightly increased over the 22-23 um, of just over 101475 um, One note here is that the projected increase to expenditures associated with the retro settlement was almost washed or nullified by vacancies in, in our 2000s, uh, object 2000s, which is classified salaries. So what that means is 
Um, this summer, we sat down in our fiscal office and we went through what's called our roll forward, carry forward. And we found that there was a lot of vacancy setups for positions. Now, some of those patient positions, of course, will be filled this year. But if we didn't realize those costs, those expenditures last year, there are cost savings. So there were substantial cost savings associated with, with, the, um, with the vacancies. So we now reflect a operating surplus, as I mentioned, of 799,227. Again, that's combined with uh, unrestricted and restricted. Um, we have 945,815 in restricted assignments. And then of course the deficit, as I mentioned, of 146 and unrestricted. Um, in summary, at the bottom there, we show that we're now carrying as of 22-23, a 12.1% reserve. Now, as I mentioned, this doesn't reflect what the adopted budget for 23-24 looks like. There's going to be a change when we bring the 23-24 budget forward in, uh, in, in uh, first interim report of December. Um, but I will give you a quick breakdown of the components of ending fund balance down there at the bottom. 5,000 in uh, non-spendable cash, and I have arrows pointing to each one. The uh, just over 3.4 million in restricted carryover, 185,000 in property tax reserve. Uh, our basic aid reserve is at 3.7 million. Uh, our, our sick leave incentive, we're no longer carrying that in the ending fund balance. I noted that last year. Um, routine restricted, these are all formula-based, uh, 276,846. Stirs and PERS, we carry a reserve of 180,770. And then our 3% uh, designated for economic uncertainty is 1,330,770. Um, and again, as I mentioned, this will change at first interim. Okay, so beginning fund, beginning fund balances will update and we stripped out all of those vacancies from last year, which were unrealized expenditures. We will roll some of those into our budget this year, which will bring up, increase our, our, um, our overall expenditures at the 23, 24 uh, first interim. And then revenue, as we know, kind of revenue is more or less, uh, you know, we're projecting based on property taxes. So the revenues, as we noted last year and this year, will vary. Um, but this is where we stand right now. Uh, this is a list of our unaudited actuals restricted balance details. Um, it, it illustrates the carry forward from 23 to, to uh, from the 22, 23 to 23, 24. Again, I'll say this again. Um, the budget line on the right-hand side needs to be updated and it will be updated at first interim. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 So um, the first column there, the 22-23 unaudited actuals, those were all basically ending fund balances carried forward into 23-24 as of the unaudited actuals. The budget is our adopted budget, which was adopted in June. So what you're going to see at first interim is, is everything basically is going to move over and we're going to rebudget expenditures associated with this, uh, these beginning fund balances and our restricted accounts at first interim. I threw a couple of uh, arrows there, just things to note, right? Basically our revenue came in higher. So educator effectiveness, that's 6266. We realized revenues at uh, P2 in April, right? So when we developed the budget, they weren't they weren't received yet, so we were showing a nine thousand dollar budget for the for the beginning of the fiscal year. But once the revenues were realized in unaudited actuals and finalized at the ending of the books closing, we'll now carry those forward into the new fiscal year. Okay, uh, let's see here. I wanted to show you a snapshot of the four thousands books and supplies. Um, as you can see, we did have a decrease from budget to actuals. Uh, our uh, revenue on the, uh, sorry, our expenditures on the books and supplies did go down substantially, about $100,000. Um, but overall, just over uh, just over $1.1 million overall. Um, let's see, again, I mentioned the revenue was, was deferred and received at P2. So the rationale for this change was um, a lot of our expenditures didn't post uh, at the time of budget. So again, we had a lot post between when we did budget development. Now, mind you, we start the budget development process in February, right? So by the time we get to June for adoption, there are many considerations taken in developing that budget, but we don't really have the final knowledge of what the year looked like with all the posted expenditures until we close the books July 31st, which is after we've adopted the budget. So I think it's important to show the 4,000s and 5,000s. This is where we had you know, more substantial changes. So in the 5,000s, we had a similar issue here. Uh, revenue was received at P2, and then we need to carry that revenue forward uh, into the adopted budget and anticipated expenditures in 23-24. Moving over into fund 11. Um, sorry, I think I just, no, I didn't, okay. 
Adult Education Fund 11. This is a little bit interesting because um, the second arrow, you'll see that we, sorry, third arrow down, you'll see that initially for the 22-23 second interim, which was our budget, we had a we had a deficit of just over $1.9 million in this fund, and now we're showing a $320,000 surplus. Um, so my predecessor, what they used to do, and I just found this out recently, especially when we went through unaudited actuals, was when there was a reserve remaining in um, adult education, they historically would budget that reserve in the 4,300 object. So basically it was kind of a placeholder if they were going to use that to buy certain things. Now in adult education, we looked at buying a food truck last year, vans last year. They were talking about some facility improvements last year. Not many of those were realized last year, but all of those expenditures which were budgeted would have caused a deficit at the end of the year. But as you can see, their, expend, their total expenditures came in much, much lower. I mean, I think this is a very positive thing in that we now have a surplus in Fund 11. Um, our ending fund balance, which is 2674 more or less tracks with years prior. Um, and then what we're doing to address this now is we're going to properly this year, move, actually we did this already in adopted budget, we moved into, the 90, into our 9,000s. So we're not going to dump $1.4 million into our 4,000s as a holding place. We're going to leave it somewhere in our 9,000s, which will carry to the ending fund balance and it will have a will have an assigned location for those for those uh, for that revenue. Questions so far? Elliot. Just, just a quick one on the it looks like here too. And I it sounds like this might have been part of what you're describing, but the supplies and the in the books, both for the adult education and previously dropped significantly in the any is that mostly just the rebudgeting and timing thing or is there a change yeah most of it actually has to do with the fact that as i mentioned they they so the 4300 object code my predecessor used to dump all of the residual dollars associated in that account instead of in the 9000 which would fall to the bottom line it was kind of a holding place this is something that the adult ed has been doing for some time remember they go their 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 accounting is, is aligned with ours, but they use a program called NOVA, which is at the state level, unlike what we do with SACS. So um, this is something that was allowed. It wasn't, but it's it's not the way we're going to budget moving forward. So, but I meant the previous, it was- Oh, I'm sorry. Was, yeah, no, it's okay. It's just the same, the one where you had the supplies, books and supplies. 4,000s, yep. Yep, there, exactly. You can, Different scenario. Right, so you see the, the drop from yep. the second to unaudited from 2.5 approximately in total to 1.3 and then projecting at that lower value too. So just yeah. making sure to explain. And I'll be clear about that as well. I don't think I was. Um, my predecessor budgeted for revenue unrealized where I don't do that. So in our second interim and in the adopted budget, the revenues were projected, which also helped us project expenditures, right? So we didn't realize those revenues until the end of the year. And we don't allow our programs to spend unless we realize the revenues. So it was the tail end of the year, which dropped our overall expenditures. Thank this you. will carry forward next year with a, with, a, with a larger amount. And again, we need to build a budget plan. So that will be brought forward at, uh, at the December 15th on audited actuals. For, and, and there's a potential for some of this falling to the bottom line, setting it aside in our reserves in each one of these funds. Okay. Yeah. Oh, do you want to... Please go ahead. Uh, my question goes back. I think to the first slide, and it's just a question about the estimated expenditures for filling vacancies. Do you have an idea? Is there an estimate there? Yeah, so we had about $1.1 million in vacancies realized, and I would say more likely than not, about half of that will be applied to this year. It needs to be carried into the budget, and it was not. So of the $1.1 million in, in cost savings in 22-23 unrealized expenditures, about half a million dollars of that actually will carry forward into 23, 24. So it's new, there's, there's noon duty positions, there's bus driver positions that weren't filled last year that we need to fill, right? There's So all of those have your salary and benefits associated. And if we didn't fill the position, it was budgeted and it just hyperinflates the, the expenditures. Um, and yes, I'd say probably half or if not more than a little more than half, we plan to, um, we plan to fill those positions this year. Recruitment's been tough, so. Okay, child development fund. Let's see here. Um, so here's the activities in the two primary programs is the state preschool before and after school program, BASRP. Our child development fund posted total revenues of uh, 518,856. Uh, and they had a total expenditure of 
We show an operating surplus of 94,000 with a ending fund balance of 137,000. Um, the district now reflects a positive ending fund balance, which oftentimes you've seen in the past, child development fund receives a, a, a transfer in from the general fund. So we're no longer having to move money in from the general fund. Fund 13, this is the cafeteria fund. Uh, revenues were posted at just over 1.3 million. Expenditures at just uh, just over 1 million. You can see we had an operating net surplus of uh, th just over 300,000 uh, with a positive ending fund balance that, that more or less tracks the prior years of 837,000. Um, one thing I did want to note was that our number of meals served was um, 311,478. A uh, small dip, actually, from the twenty from the from the prior year of uh, three hundred twenty five thousand one forty five, but now, as I've mentioned before, uh, PGUSD is operating through the Universal Meals Program, so every every student has access to hot meals twice a day, um, and our uh, food services program is now looking to move towards more uh, more speed scratch cooking and changing up the menu, which I think is good. But when we move into the uh, first interim report, you may you may likely see expenditures increase. Uh, because it's going to cost us more to do that sort of cooking for our students. Um, but now we do reflect, as I mentioned at the bottom, 837640 uh, ending fund balance. Fund 14, deferred maintenance. Um, we had ni uh, 93372 in federal revenue. Uh, we have a negative there, um, three, $3,932,000 in local revenue. Um, and that was in, that's associated with gains and losses and in investments. Our total revenue is eighty nine thousand four thirty nine. Again, expenditures uh, give us they they produce a surplus of thirteen thousand five sixty eight. You can see below that the transfer in from the general fund of two hundred thousand is directed by the board last year. It leaves us with an ending fund balance of three eighty seven four forty one. Fund twenty. Don't need to talk much about this slide. We've talked about it many times before. I have to show it to you every year. Um, but this is our post-employment benefits, and uh, this fund was established to uh, fund post-employment benefits, uh, but we can't use it for anything else. So we don't we, we don't have the ability to transfer this money in or out of any other fund. Um, so this will sit here until we have a liability associated with post-employment benefits. And you can see the ending fund balance has more or less been the same, 6262 This is a snapshot of Fund 21, uh, Building and Technology. This is our Measure D, Measure A. Um, Let's see the fund. Uh, the beginning, the beginning fund posted revenues of uh, two hundred and fifty-two thousand four thirty-seven. You can see we were carrying a beginning fund balance of six point five million. Uh, this is this year we had substantial uh, expenditures, but not quite what we anticipated in the total expenditures at the adopted budget. Uh, expenditures were just over three million. Deficit is okay in this fund. Remember that because this is associated with uh, Measure D Series A issuance which leaves us with an ending fund balance of just over 3.4 million in this fund. This year, we do have a plan um, in place, a budgetary plan in place to spend more than $3.4 million on facility improvement projects. And that is why in October, we'll be bringing forward authorization of Measure D Series B, which will be a new influx of revenue this year for us. Capital Reserve Fund 40, similar to uh, Deferred Maintenance Fund 14. Um, as you can see, we transfer in $200,000 uh, down below. The revenue that we've been receiving over the years is associated with fees and also the lease payment from David Avenue School from the Charter School. Um, again, not a lot of activity in this fund. 175323 in expenditures left us with a surplus. So we're now carrying a $782,280 uh, ending fund balance in Fund 40. And that was as fast as I could get through it. Do you have any questions for me? I have one. Sure. Going back to Fund 11 for adult ed. Now, does the, do a lot of those monies come from a consortium? Is that where? That's correct. Okay. And is there any concern with us not spending that money and potentially sure. losing it? Right. So... When, when we look at the second interim column and we show that deficit, and if you look at books and supplies, right, mm -hmm. you have 1.9 million, six, six, uh, 63 or $1.9 million there. And as I mentioned, we lumped that in the 4,300s. Yeah. You're right. So there, the, the, the consortium will no longer allow the adult ed fund to carry more than a, oh gosh, I think it's an 18% um, carryover. 
Okay. So you're right. At some point here, and it's by the end of this year, we are going to, within adult ed fund, have to um, commit those expenditures. Now, as I mentioned, um, there is a discussion about expanding facility use at the adult education campus. Um, and that's a discussion that started last year and it's moving through this year, but that's a discussion that has to be had with the consortium and approved by the consortium before all of the adult ed program can use those money or commit them uh, to uh, capital improvements. So the plan is, but again, has to go to the consortium um, to potentially build out a four, four classroom parents place facility at the site. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we're looking at using those funds for. But again, they don't have, they haven't had their consortium meeting this year and that will be a discussion the consortium has to have and approve. Okay. Yep. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just another quick follow-up on that. Does the boneyard fall in, if that's the right name of it, it fall into that? Boneyard. Um, re the new planning for the adult site? It does. So the boneyard or the, the old building that exists over near the preschool um, is, is a potential site for that for that program right now the parents place is on the opposite side of the campus it's for it's through adult education um but the school district owns the property and owns the buildings right so if the school district is in in need of expansion in certain areas early childhood education we're going to need to find another location for the parents place but again we'll see what the consortium has to say and yes that location where the boneyard exists is is the prime location to build uh, that's what i was hoping thank you Okay, Trustee Otmar, any questions? No, thank you. Clerk McNary? No, thank you for the thorough presentation and cover sheet. Thanks to your team too, a lot of work. It's a lot of work, yeah, thank you. I do have one more, if I if I may. Um, to As to the David Avenue site, mm -hmm. has there been any word about, because um, it's Monterey Bay Charter that leases from us right now, it seems like every, Every year or two, there's chatter about them finding their own site, and that's gone on for a decade, probably, and they still have not realized that site. Is there any update from them on where they are on that? Um, we entered into a new contract with them uh, with an escalator associate. I brought that to the board last year. Yep. The site that they have out in Forder, they ran into issues with um, CEQA. Okay. So they did have a site and they have, they, they had master planned that site, but they ran into a CEQA issue and it was a mitigated, a mitigated negative declaration, which is what it's called. So essentially, I believe, well, I don't want to speak out of turn, but there was, there was something or some sort of species that had to be relocated from the site. So it's not looking like at any point and anytime soon, okay. they're going to be moving out of our facility Okay. because they still have not, not done the mitigated, the mitigation, the mitigated efforts at that site nor have they received final plan approval for the building. Okay. So I know that's what they plan to pursue. It just might take a while. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Um, when I was at the county office, we built a brand new community school. It took us 11 years from, the, from inception to actually opening the building. And we had a mitigated negative declaration and a CEQA issue at that site. So we shall see. I will, I'll report to the board as, as, as uh, I receive updates. Okay. Appreciate that update. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go out to the public for public comment and we'll come back around after public comment for anything that may have popped in a trustee's mind. So Lewis, anyone with their digital hand up? Okay. Mr. Moss, would you like to comment? Thank you. That's Shamas. Um, my question is about the cafeteria fund. Now, in the past, you know, we've always been asked to, we, the district has always been asked to bump up, aid the cafeteria fund. And they've always looked at, oh, geez, can't we squeeze a little more money out of the school lunch, you know, the cost and, you know, all of this. And that always bothered me because I felt like, why aren't we just putting enough money into that fund anyway? You know, why, why do we make that fund pay for itself or we we pressure it so much to pay for itself? Now that we have um, free lunches, how is that affecting, is that loosening up the, the uh, availability of funding? How's that working? So 
So typically when we have public comment, we would just thank the, you know, the contributor for their comment. However, um, Ms. Jamas's question, I, I, now that she brought up, I share it as well. So do you mind answering it here at the meeting? Sure. Um, so we do receive free lunches, but remember that's just, so it, the, it may cost us $2.10 mm -hmm. to produce a meal and and the um, reimbursement is like a dollar 50 or a dollar 40 right so we are offering free lunches to everyone but oftentimes it's at a deficit mm -hmm. right we also have to you know so our overhead is normally in fact historically it's been um larger than our revenue mm -hmm. right yeah and i believe historically this board had um had committed uh, a transfer in from the general fund to support fund 13. Yes. And we're not, in, we're not in that, we're, we're not doing that at this point moving forward. Now that's not to say that once we expand our menu offering salad bars, scratch cooking, additional staff, we may end up back to the, back to the, you know, general fund transfer in. Um, I don't anticipate that with the, we have a little over $800,000 in ending fund balance right now. Um, and yes, it's it's statutory, the Universal Mills Program. It's just the funding is less than uh, what it costs us in overhead. All right. So so then my comment is, without Please. a question, is um, just for the board to kind of look at that as so so that it doesn't become a you know a, an issue every time uh, when you're looking at your budget and and you know. The superintendent has to say, hey, uh, what are we going to do about this cafeteria fund now? So it's just something for you guys to look at. Like, are we uh, OK with supplementing when we need to instead of making it a, um, a, you know, in the past? I know, you know, that we people go over the menu price and the, you know, and how many people are working and all of that. So it's just a overall view of nutrition and the importance of that. Thank you. And that idea may come up later when we talk about strategic plan or in the future when we talk about goals. So thank you for your comment. Um, Lewis, I'm looking online. I don't see anyone with their digital hand up. So, and you don't either. Okay. With that, we'll close out public comment. And trustees, did you have anything further that you wanted to contribute? Clerk McNary, you're shaking your head. Brian, shaking your head. Laura. I was just going to say thank you as well, since I didn't get a chance to to you in your office. Okay. So with that, we do need to actually approve this item. It's not an info item, it's an action item. So would anybody like to make a motion? I'll move to approve the unaudited actuals for 22-23. I'll second. So we've got motion made by Clerk McNary, seconded by Carolyn Swanson. Mandy, majority vote, please. Say that again. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to our next item, and we do have a guest here tonight. Janelle um, is here. She's here in the peach colored blazer um, on the dais. And uh, this is our information discussion item to begin the discussion of strategic plan update. The um, current strategic plan, you'll find it in the packet and on page 149. And with that, Mr. Jordan, I'll hand it over to you and Janelle. Thank you very much, President Carolyn and trustees. Um, so what we're looking at doing tonight is starting the process of discussing what the board's strategic goals and initiatives might look like moving forward. Um, the prior document that's in your packet was from 2020-2021. Uh, in development of strategic plan and goals in, in my prior life, I've always looked at a strategic plan from the board's perspective as a three or a five-year plan. Normally, a board does not um, designate a strategic plan you know, per annum, and I'm not exactly certain if that's how this was designed in the past. Um, we have one board member, two board members that were on the board when this was designed. Um, so tonight's discussion really is, uh, number one, to look at the existing strategic plan, the goals that are defined, there's three, and then there's a number of initiatives underneath each one of those goals and determine whether or not to extend this plan. We're in, we're in year three right now, okay? So we could either look at extending this plan, making changes to the initiatives, keeping the same goals and extending it to a five-year plan, that's an option. There's, there's the, the other option is this, this, was made, this was designed as a three-year plan and the goals need to be revised and all initiatives need to be amended underneath each one of the goals. 
So what we included in the packet was that strategic plan. Uh, we included a flow chart that shows the process of strategic plan building a uh, calendar that we currently have this year to go through uh, and have special meetings or regular meetings with the board uh, to determine how to move forward with the strategic plan. And um, that's a quick summary for me with that. Janelle, did you have anything else to add? No, um, no, just that um, it, depending on which model the board would like to use, whether it's to extend the plan or to um, start over or, or, or revise it and, and begin with a new plan. Um, you have approximately six meetings on the calendar. So if you're going to start over and revise, the board may want to consider adding a couple of meetings because it, it's going to take more than those six meetings if, if that's the direction the board would like to go. Thank you, Janelle. So um, board... We've got kind of a lot to wrap our heads around. We've got, um, you know, a transition going on right now in our district with leadership. Right now, we have an interim superintendent. We kind of want to feel out, like Janelle was saying, if we want to keep this document, um, extend it or start over. And I think it's possible that for us to even um, digest that decision, we may, the, the trustees, we may all have some questions about kind of like, the overall plan, how this would look, where do we implement board goals? Are we still going to continue doing superintendent goals or should we just do board goals and evaluate whoever the superintendent is at that time? So um, trustees, I'm speaking for myself right now, but let me just go around and get kind of a temp check and see if y'all would like a bit of kind of groundwork laid. Um, and Mr. Jordan, feel free to let us know if you would like, what your recommendation is, if you would like to extend or um, start, uh, start over. Actually, let me start with that. Mr. Jordan. Yeah. yeah. Let me jump in. And there was something that I did leave out. Okay. So we're in the 20, we're in the 23, 24 year right now. Um, so the district has moved forward with an alignment with the strategic plan for this year. So I will be bringing on at the October meeting, um, a strategic plan alignment from the district's perspective as to what the district is focusing on this year. So anything that we're discussing tonight, I'm sure you're all aware this is moving forward in the 24, 25 year. Um, but our, um, oh, excuse me, our administrators have developed um, a pretty substantive response to the goals and strategies this year. I'm working with them all right now to finalize that document, and I will present that in October. And then at the end of this year, this is the way that I see this moving forward is um, at the end of the year, we'll wrap up with what did the district accomplish, what initiatives uh, and strategies were addressed, uh, what are the metrics associated with those strategies or initiatives, if any? And those are, that's all defined in the plan I'll bring forward in October. And then we kind of start the process over. So looking forward, uh, what the spring looks like for the board would be um, we either determine over the course of the next six meetings that we're extending or creating new. But in the spring, what the board would do is they would meet with, with the district. They would give them the new goals and strategies that they would like the district to focus on. Okay, so then those strategies, the district would then, myself, would work with each one of my administrators, one of each one of our sites to develop our planning discussion. So we call it fall planning. It's normally done in May or June for the fall. We would do exactly what I just described to you a minute ago. We'll have an October, like I said, document built over the summer, but that will be then presented to the board in August of the 24-25 year, showing the board. Here are the strategies and alignment with goals that the district uh, plans to um, take on in the 24, 25 years. So we're kind of a little bit behind on this this year, bringing this forward in October, but that's just because we didn't have the meeting in the spring uh, to, to, to make an adjustment. My recommendation here would be, I think you have very strong goals. Um, you know, they're very generalized and, the, and, your, and your strategies and initiatives get a little bit, little bit more fine-tuned. Um, it's really to the pleasure of the board. I personally think an extension would be what's best suited for this district at this time, at least with the board goals. That doesn't mean you can't add new board goals, but I really like the board goals that exist right now. And they're really in alignment with what the district is doing this year and projected to do next year associated with strategies and initiatives. And can you speak briefly about how this strategic plan aligns or hopefully aligns with the LCAP? Sure. So everything in this document right now, as you can see, has a P1, P2, P4 next to it. Th those all currently align with our local ac uh, control accountability plan. So each one of our initiatives is tied to a strategy. 
So moving forward, we, we would clearly want to do that moving forward because again, when the district is addressing the goals and initiatives, we want it to tie to our LCAP. There's a key at the bottom if, if for those of you that haven't seen it. Yeah, and so we're talking about the documents on page 154. Yeah. Yeah. So let's yeah. go around and start our discussion at 610. Um, Janelle, did you want to add anything? Just just a suggestion that if whether you modify this or start over, maybe moving that key up to the beginning of the document would be helpful because sometimes it gets missed. <laughs> okay. Mr. Jordan, will you make a note? I will. Okay. Um, okay. So Trustee Hazen, let's start. Yeah. So I actually was, before you spoke, uh, um, Mr. Jordan was of the mindset too, that we want to push this current plan forward at least another year because we're hiring a new superintendent. It seems very important to me that a new hire be part of our next goals, dependent on their, his or her strengths, weaknesses, et cetera. So I do like these goals and would like to push them forward at least another year. One question on that is some of the underlying uh, bullets. I wanted, I wanted to ask if we could you know, at this meeting, focus in on them to ask for a little, either a little more clarity or, you know, again, it's not reworking the plan, but making sure that it aligns with some of the issues we brought up um, as a board. Yeah, the, the 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 point of modification would be that you're going to keep your goals, you're probably going to keep the main strategies, and the bullet points are going to be updated to fit uh, current practices, wishes, um, things that the board would like the staff to focus on, those types of things. Perfect. So I'll hold on the bullet point suggestions I have for now and just speak to that overall process. Okay. So Dr. Hazen, you're, um, you're obviously, I think we're all fine with that. It's rolling already for the school year. We all need to be fine with that, but you're saying um, you would like to see it roll for another school year as well for the 24, 25 school year. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Clerk McNary. Um, being very new to all of this, um, I guess my instinct is to, um, go with staff's recommendation, given they are the ones who are kind of boots on the ground, um, working with all of this information. Um, I guess my question would then be, that would make it a four-year plan versus a three or a five-year plan. And then, and then what, um, how does that work? Yeah, the, the board has the option to make it a four-year plan, a five-year plan. They can modify it and have it be intended for the next three years. I mean, it, it's really up to the board's discretion. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so I would be inclined just at this point to extend it a year. Um, okay, so we would call that um, just thinking about at the end of this meeting when we're giving direction to like maybe change the header of this document because right now it says you yeah. know twenty one twenty two, what would what would make it clear to reflect what you want, um, Clerk McNary? Um, I don't know. Um, like I don't year know. wise, you're thinking. Well, 24, if we're talking 25. about going through this year into twenty four twenty five, I don't know if the strategic plan is named based on the year or if we update it, then it's going to be current as of. Yeah, I think we should add some sort of timeline on, you know, maybe it's like a two year plan or whatever. Sure. So we'll think about that okay. as we as we go on. Uh, Trustee Otmar. I agree that we have a lot going on right now in the search for a superintendent. Um, as I reviewed the goals, um, I can see where I might be comfortable or more comfortable adding a couple of things or specifically one thing under health and safety. Um, so I'm in favor of extending it, but perhaps just with a slight modification or an addition of a few things under the bullet points, um, if that's something that we can do. And then. And are we going after the bullet points today? Is that something that we're looking into or today? Are we really just kind of extending it or starting over? Well, as Janelle mentioned, we have six meetings. So I think um, consensus today on the extension of the plan mm -hmm. uh, is one thing we're looking for today. If we're talking about one year, then the plan would be the 2020-21 through 24-25 school year strategic plan. Mm -hmm. um, if we're talking about potentially adding new board goals, um, 
I think tonight would be good to focus on additional goals instead of looking at strategies and initiatives. I, I By the way, the bullet points I take as initiatives, the strategy is labeled strategy. So when I speak, that's what I'm talking about. Sorry if I didn't mention that earlier. Um, so, you know, there's a lot uh, associated with making changes to the initiatives under each strategy. But as you can see, like board goal one, strategy one, you can see that what's taking place in this district right now is heavily focused in this area, at least with related, related to the strategy, to the strategy itself. Um, there are a number of initiatives, the bullet points below that have already taken place over the course of the last three years, but they're not complete either. Right. So we're continuing that good work forward through this year. And then if this is a, a, a four year total plan, we'll carry that into next year. So I think we want to be um, cognizant of how we revise that language because we already kind of the district already has, you know, movement trajectory related to some of these initiatives, especially this year, as I mentioned. Um, but this is your this is this is the board's document. So however the board would like to structure this is 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 perfect uh, from the district's perspective. Um, you know, the district likes this as a guiding document. It's very important for us to know um, what initiatives sorry, strategies and initiatives, the board would like us to focus on every single year. Um, when I when I worked with our administrators this year, we kind of just gave them the opportunity to pick and choose, right? But I would like the board to tell the district, here's what, here's what we, the board, would like you to focus on next year. And we just, that hasn't happened, it didn't happen this year. I'm not certain if it happened last year. I came in in September. Um, when you met with staff, were they familiar with this document? They were. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, trustee Brian Swanson. Um, thank you. Uh, there's nothing, you know, under the major headers that I would really want to change. I think they're all great. I would not mind throwing a couple bullet points underneath just to, again, to modify. Uh, and some of these things are really just recently had popped into my head. I spent a hour and a half yesterday over at community high school with those really amazing amazing young people and staff it's just incredible what they're doing over there and and what we did um even in the first half hour when we were just were going around in a circle and kind of sharing where we were at that at that moment but what one of the things that i left that meeting with was that there's the feeling of kind of a disconnect from what's happening in the schools and what's happening with the rest of the community and I would love for us to look at that as a board. It's like, how do we integrate better with what's happening with, with city council, with police and fire, with all, you know, all these, what's happening at the library for us to be just better integrated. When you think about, you know, we have nearly 2000 students and it's a huge part of our population. And how do we integrate better? They've got like nothing to do right now. They're driving to Marina and Seaside just to hang out. They don't have a skate park, of course. You know, it's like, what, how do we do that? And how do we, you know, we have them for six or eight hours a day, but we have the, the, uh, the ability to at least help in, um, with the rest of their day too, and make their days better. So I would love to just that be something that we think about and reach out to those other you know, big units of our community and and see if they're able to have a conversation with us about dealing with that. So there's that. And the other thing that Lewis and I had talked about too, when, and I think this really comes on to just like student learning is unifying our platforms, the the different educational platforms that we use so that we don't have one teacher using this thing and another using that. And especially it's like if you're a parent with two or three kids and they have different teachers or there are different sites that, you know, it would be, it sounds like it would be so difficult for, for a parent to just have any idea what is going on, you know? So how do we do that? And it's not something that you flip the switch immediately. It's something that we have to, uh, you know, and I think Lewis said it really well too. It's like, it's like we have to start kind of at the at the you know at the beginning, but it has to also the direction has to come from on high too. And how do we meet that and unify those systems so that ultimately it's just so much easier for a parent or a student, both of them really, to navigate what we have going on within 
the district. And um, I mean, I can't imagine how hard it would be for somebody in kindergarten to then go to a first grade and second grade and those platforms to be switching and for a parent to try to navigate all that stuff. So those are just kind of big thoughts, but I think it really addresses, you know, um, the first one, you know, and how do we enhance student learning and achievement, which goes again to right hand in hand with how do we communicate with our parents too. So those were my thoughts about that. Thank you. And this actually brings up a question I have for Janelle and Mr. Jorn, because um, so tonight, can the board dig into goals in this document, strategies in this document, initiatives, or um, or are we really here to just begin the discussion like the agenda says and just to give guidance on if we want to extend this. Will you help us with that, Janelle? Yeah. So the board can certainly discuss the initiatives and the strategies and the goals and decide. And, and part of those discussions will hopefully lead, lead the board to decide whether they want to modify or start over or extend or whatever your action or your direction is going to be to staff. So I don't think it's inappropriate to have those discussions if that's what the board wants to do. Okay. Uh, but if we had, like Brian just had some really great points and he right. put a lot of effort into them. If we're all going to contribute those points tonight, but they're not really going to go anywhere, then like, are they going to get in this document in the future document or no? That So that's that's really kind of what I think staff is looking for is from, from the board is that direction. So do you, if you, for example, you have three goals in this strategic plan. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to add a goal, then then that would be a discussion to have tonight because adding a goal or adding a strategy is going to extend the time that you need to facilitate this document. So okay. having to begin those discussions would be fine if that's if that's in particular if you want to add a goal or a strategy. Mm -hmm. If you're just talking about the initiatives or the bullet points, then I don't necessarily need think you need to get into that detail tonight because that's like I said, there's six board meetings where each of those will be discussed. And you can modify, I mean, for example, if you look under the first goal and strategy, um, you know, third bullet point down, it talks about um, all students will be assessed for academic learning gaps due to distance learning gaps for the fall 21, in the fall of 21. I mean, obviously it's outdated. It needs to be modified, mm -hmm. right? So that's a, that's a simple fix, potentially. I mean, you might be adding or subtracting from that or taking it out or whatever, but adding a goal or adding a strategy is definitely much more significant in the strategic plan. And even though that's just a modification, which is what you kind of everyone's talked about tonight is just modifying it, not starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, those modifications, big modifications like that will take time to implement. And I know that um, interim superintendent is taking down the notes. I'm writing down notes so that any discussions that are happening tonight, for, in particular, if the board wants to add a new goal or a new strategy, those will be noted to put in the plan for the, you know, for the, so that it's modified. For the next meeting. Correct. Okay. So we should be giving you ideas, concerns, whatever that we've seen in the district so that we can brainstorm to modify this document. Yeah, yes, and you, yes, and it's up to the board. You can do that tonight or you can wait till your next meeting. But I mean, we've got time tonight. Yeah, if you right, have, like let's get this rolling. Get, so, first of all, let's just go around. Hold on, Elliot. First of all, let's just go around and make sure that all of us agree that we want to keep this format and we want to extend it through um, extra school years because I just want to make sure that we all are in agreement for that. And then we can dig into our lists of concerns similar to what Brian was just doing. Okay. Okay, Elliot. Or I was just going to say, yeah, it may it would make sense for us to maybe, in my mind, just to go course to narrow. So start, do we all agree with the board goals? Have any questions on those? Then maybe no, say- No, do, do we... you want to extend and use the, continue to use this document and modify it? That's the question. Oh, I've, yeah, I've already answered that one. I okay, said. then Trustee Otmar. Yes, I'm in agreement that we extend this, but also, but with modification. Sure. Okay, and Clerk McNary? Yeah, I'm in agreement. Okay, and Brian? Extend and modify, yes. Extend and modify. Okay, so we're all on the same page. So then, Janelle, will you facilitate this conversation for us? And we can all bring out our notes of concerns and ideas that we want to um, implement in the future for the modified version of this document. Yeah, so okay. I, I agree with something that Trustee Hansen just said. It's, it's, it's good to go from 
large to small, right? And so tonight, sure. it might be best to talk about goals, make sure that these goals are sufficient for the board, thinking in 2024 or, or beyond, however far the board wants to extend this, that you talk about, are these goals, goals that are there acceptable and do you want to add any more? So I think that should be the first discussion. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Go ahead. So, so the goal number one is student learning and achievement, overall educational program. Every student is proficient or above grade level, engaged in his or her learning and contributing positively to the community. So is that a goal that um, this board believes is of priority and is well-worded? Okay, and I can go around and ask the trustees. So Clerk McNary. Yeah, I'm just trying to break down as a high level goal. I'm okay with this. I think we can measure it except for how we're contributing positively in the community, but I'm guessing that's where you then develop the strategies and the layers and I don't need to focus on that right now. Right. That would be an initiative or, or maybe to to help yeah. to kind of think about this. Think about it as goals, actions, um and, and then from the goal, you have the goal, you have the actions that you need. So your actions are going to be your strategies, your initiatives, you know, better communi communication with the community, for example. That's an action. That's something that's tangible that can be done. And for each action, you're going to want, potentially, you might want to, and you may not want to do it yet. You might want to wait till you start over or you get your the new superintendent or, or whatever it may be. But you might want to add, you know, kind of a, a timeline, right? You know, we'd like this done by the end of the year and some priorities. We want this one focused on, um, you know, we want, how are we going to measure this? How are we going to know it's done, right? So those are things to talk about when you get to talk to Beth initiatives. I'm not sure that that's good for tonight, but those are just some things to keep in mind for, oops, excuse me, for some up upcoming meetings. Well, and Janelle, shouldn't also the staff be more in charge of the of the bullet points and the initiatives versus the board, because from my understanding, we should be bringing the high level concerns. We are all not educational experts mm -hmm. and the educational ex experts at the district office and at the site should be. Yeah. Yes. And you can do it that way too. But I, I guess when you think of, for example, um, having a student learning and achievement, you know, contributing positively to the community, when you think of that goal, what is it that the board would like to see happen? Right. For example, um, a board member Swanson, uh, trust, excuse me, trustee Swanson indicated that he'd like more of a cooperation, co collaboration with the community. Okay. That is an initiative that you could put down as a bullet point. How you do that would be what staff does. Got it. So, and how it's measured would be what staff does. And well, you could say, yes, how it's measured could be staff, but also you're from the board's perspective as well. We'd like to see three programs that integrate the community. You know, I mean, that's an example. You don't have to get that detailed, but you could, it, it is really up. Sorry. I talk with my hands. <laughs> it's really up to the board. Um, how, how much direction okay. they want to give to staff. Okay. So clerk McNary, as far as goal one, nothing in it, um, makes you disagree. It's, but like you said, it's a very broad high level goal. Yes. Okay. Trustee Otmar. Yeah, I am. I'm fine with uh, goal one. Um, I think that it is an important goal. It's kind of everything that we're here to do. So I would like to keep that. And I, I'm fine with how broad it is. I think that we can get into the details another time. But mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. good point. Okay, Trustee Brian Swanson. Uh, I'm good with uh, goal one as it stands. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, I'm fine with how it stands at, uh, and of course, in the future, we can reprioritize where these goals are and everything, right? Because maybe actually the majority of us feel that safety is a bigger goal than academics. Cause if you don't feel safe at school, you can't even get into academics. So we can move all that at a later date. You can move it around. Okay. Trustee Hazen. Yeah. The only, I love the goal as it is. The only thing I might suggest is his, her to be his, her, there. I highlighted that. Or you can just cross out his, her and just say there. Yeah, engaged in learning and contributing positively to the community. You don't even need a pronoun. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, Janelle. Um, okay, so that's your second goal for the board is entitled credibility, confidence, and communi communication, accountability, and integrity. 
Student, family, and community partnership relationships and dialogue contribute to the success of every student. So the question is, is that goal still a goal of this board? Trustee Altmar? Absolutely. For me, that should still be a goal, 100%. Trustee Brian? Oh, of course. Yes. I think that, <laughs> yeah. Why wouldn't we want? It's like, no, let's not have credibility. Stop, <laughs> stop communicating. So, yes. Of Basics, course. right? Yeah. Basics. Okay. I, yeah, it look, it's definitely something that's on my radar. Uh, Trustee Hazen? Yep. Fully yep. agree with it. Just noting that Brian's comments fit well under the community partnership side. So, something we can talk more about later. Clerk McNary? I'm in agreement with board goal two as it's written. Okay. Thank you. Okay, the third goal in your strategic plan is credibility, confidence, communication, fiscal solvency, program services, and budget alignment. Trustee Bryan? No issues there. And I am reading it. Um, I mean, it's... Similar. Okay, so board goal two is credibility, confidence, communication, accountability, and integrity. Board goal three is credibility, confidence, communication, fiscal. So are we understanding that board goal three is more about the um the fiduciary, the fiscal side of things, and board goal two is more about the student? And yeah, it, it appears to me, and it may not be what the board thinks so it's just this is just my view <laughs> um board goal two is more about the community credibility confidence communication with the students family communities more people shall i say and the um board goal three would be more about the programs fiscal accountability services provided by the district etc so not people other actions programs. Okay. Trustee Hazen? Yeah, no, I, I like this board goal as well. I mean, there's the only thing I would think about adding, but I don't feel I need to, would be just maximization, like something that it suggests. But again, this might be better in a strategy, looking for gra grants where available and making sure that we're using our funds in the best way possible. I mean, I, I know that's what we're doing, but I'm just thinking something that highlights that could be added but without changing. Probably a strategy or, or an initiative. Clerk McNary. As presented, I don't know, is it redundant or is are we saying credibility, confidence, confidence, communication, and then fiscal solvency, or is that carryover from the last one? I'm just trying to distinguish between the two. No, I think that these words were used throughout this document. And they if you can you'll see also on our cover page for they're used heavily at the top of every info mm -hmm. act info or action item. Um, yeah, but this is about fiscal pro solvency, programs being delivered, services being delivered, and budget alignment. And I and I do agree wholeheartedly with the discussion that just ensued related to maximizing of available resources. But that would be something that we would probably develop a strategy for, and then under the strategy initiatives associated with that. I'm okay with it. Okay, um, so that makes more sense. Uh, to me, I just wonder now, we have these three kind of main ideas on here, but we have four main board goals um, that we have. They're always printed kind of with these little check boxes on our agenda. And so these, it seems like the strategic plan goals, we've got three of them and, and each one kind of address. So for example, we have student learning and achievement. Aha, okay, that goes with goal number one in the strategic plan, right? Health and safety of students and schools is the one I'm missing out of these three. Um, that's the fourth one. What do you, I know that it's kind of a subset under number three, but to me, it doesn't make sense to be there. It is a subset and that's a, that's a very good point. And that's what we're here to discuss. I think that, I mean, I personally place this very high as like a high level initiative, health and safety, health and safe, sorry, healthy and safe schools for students. There can be a ton of strategies and initiatives associated with that. Yeah. But to me, that does seem like a high level goal that the board may want to entertain. I know that's very important to this board. And 
so it, it appears that all three goals are still within the boards, yeah. what the board wants. Yeah. Now the next question is, do you want to add some? So this would be the perfect segue. Okay. Yes. Well, I would, if it's okay with the rest of the board or majority of the board, I would like to have four total ones in the strategic plan and the fourth one be health and safety of students in schools. Can I comment on this? Yeah. This one. Um, so perhaps I'm a, a bit lost here. I'm looking at this board goal, credibility, confidence, communication, fiscal solvency program, services and budget alignment, but underneath where strategy four is, this strategy is specific to this board goal because it discusses uh, be free from all forms of violence, a welcoming environment, and I don't see how that is in line with what this board goal is. That's why we want to pull it and make it a fourth one. I see what you're saying. So it just seems like a mismatch. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. so the idea would be, in addition to the three board goals that you have here, you're going to add a fourth goal regarding health and safety. Strategy number four, which is currently under the board goal for fiscal solvency, would yeah. be moved to the, the new board goal. And when I say board goals, I'm talking about there's this one page document. It's on page 147 of our packet. And it's, um, it looks like this. That's what I'm looking at. So I guess what I'm seeing here is different from what's on this page. Right. Document. Which doc yeah. So the document that's up on the page is page starts on page 154. Which I think is a really good point, because that's another thing we all kind of need to wrap our heads around is like we have different documents with similar but not same information. And we have so this is what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. And then. But what was just up was is different than what is what yeah, was just up there. is page one fifty four. I know I understand that. I guess I'm just trying to figure out why they're different. So so page one fifty four or the document that was previously on the screen mm -hmm. is the strategic plan that was put in place in twenty and twenty one. That is what you are updating. This document that's on the screen now is um, your mission statement and your goals, and it doesn't look like it was coordinated with the strategic plan that was previously adopted. So part of part of your discussion should be coordinating this document if it's current and what you want with the strategic plan. Okay. I guess I'm just not following why they aren't aligned. And I can't answer like, that question. Okay. It's <laughs> so it's a big mystery it's and I'm mystery. not confused. There's just an actual mystery at hand. Okay. Very, yeah. Very well, okay. You mind if I chime in? I think, you know, we may not be reinventing the wheel here if we if we so I'm if is the board more more familiar with the document that's on the screen right now? That's, no, I mean, we have a majority of the board that hasn't had one of these meetings before. Okay. Brian and I have seen this document. We've had meetings before with the facilitator where we kind of go over it line by line. I don't know if, yeah, so I guess the answer is I mean, where I was going with that is, um, you know, we're looking at making changes to the strategic plan, but now we're also talking about how the strategic plan didn't necessarily fully align with this document, which is the PGUSD board goals. So where I'm going with that is if this, if there are some things in here that you would like to parse out and bring over into the strategic plan, and we have that here already, that's something we can focus on. Mm -hmm. um, for example, health and safety. I mean, you have health and safety here as maybe we call this a strategy and then you have initiatives below. Once we start getting into the discussion of adding to the strategic plan, um, we already have some information available to us. Which document would you like me to put up on the screen? <laughs> <laughs> Go back to the strategic plan. Yeah, I think strategic yeah, plan. Yeah, okay. So we're smoothing out the edges on kind of the existing documents and going forward and um, kind of new systems. And like uh, Mr. Dorn was saying, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's been plenty. This is like not new to schools, but we are kind of just in this transition right now. So um, so where are we at? So we're going, it sounds like the majority of us are in agreement. We can go around and ask individual trustees if they agree that we should um, add a safety goal is number four. And can we number these on the strategic plan? Well, and that would be my next question for the board is what order would you like them in? That would matter. That's actually a pretty great question. So um Trustee Brian, we'll start with you on that. Um no, not Mike. 
I don't know if I need anything in any particular order to change them. I, um, to me, if it's a stated board goal, it's as one is as important as the other, you know, for us to put it there. So I, I have no, I'm not leaning in any one direction really. We could add the, the next one at the bottom. Clerk McNary. Or sorry, Janelle, did you want to say something? I was just going to say, you don't necessarily, it doesn't mean that they're going to be in any, you know, one's not more important than the other, but if there is one that you like to focus on, usually the first one you see is the one everyone thinks that you're focusing on. Mm -hmm. So that's the only reason I ask about order. Clerk McNary. So I would be of the opinion that health and safety of students would be our top priority. Um, so number one, followed by student learning and achievement, um, communication, accountability, and integrity. And then the fourth would be the finance for me. So the order that they're actually listed on in like the little check boxes on the document, on like in the packet, you know, every page of the packet has, so for example, piece of paper. Yeah. page three on our packet. Um, I had health and safety above student learning, but... Those. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah, I flipped those in my list. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Trustee Otmar? I'm so already we'll on. Uh, <laughs> I am in agreement with Trustee McNary. I think that health and safety should be top um, because, as you said, if a student doesn't feel safe, there is no academic learning. Yeah. Um, so, Yes, in the order of the check boxes, however, uh, health and safety up top. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Trustee Brian, we started with you, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I would agree to have safety first, uh, student academics and learning second, credibility and communication third, but credibility and communication can fall under safety, but that's, I guess, a topic for a different time. And number four, uh, fiscal solvency, accountability, and then Trustee Hazen. Yeah, I, I guess I am still of the mind. I, I, I like to, I want to add it. I would like it to go health and safety to go second, mostly just because I feel like we're reworking the document a bit much by putting it first. Not that it's critically, not critically important, but student learning and achievement is where most of our, not all, but a lot of our initiatives are right now. And so by putting that first, are we saying we need to take a major change in the the strategies and initiatives coming up in the next year? And just to note that the, the health and safety goal is a new goal. So it's going to be added somewhere in the document and you could add it at the beginning or at the end or in the middle. It's, it's your choice because it's I, not on the document now. Right. I know I'm proposing it go second because I think I don't want to just, I don't want to take a large change away. It's, I think one and two are equally important. I agree with the Maslow's hierarchy that's been brought up before that you need to have health and safety to do student learning. But I think the district, the focus on student learn, learning um, should stay at least in this next year, personally, that's number one. Okay. What does the majority of the board feel on the ordering? I'd like it first. Elliot would like it second. Trustee Otmar. Okay. Clerk McNary. Health and safety first. Okay, Trustee Brian. I'm fine with health and safety first. Maybe. Okay, so first it is. Thank you. Thank you, um, Trustee Hazen, for the input. Now, the only question left for the goals, you've added the goals, you've ordered them, is do you want to modify the language? So I note that the 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 check boxes that are on the, the document are a little bit shorter. Um, and so the goals in the strategic plan have a, they're kind of like a title with some explanation for the most part. Do you want, so it's like student learning and achievement. That's the, that's, and then it has additional information after it. The second goal is credibility, excuse me, credibility, confidence, communication and accountability, integrity. And then it's got, you know, colons and talks about students. Do you want it to say, you know, credibility, I mean, it could stay the same. And then the last one, instead of saying credibility, communication, you know, change it to start with fiscal so solvency. So it aligns more with what's in your checkboxes. It's just a question for the board. Um. Okay. Trustee Hazen. Yep. I like that idea where the checkboxes would be the before the dash, and then we'd have the detail after. I'm a big fan of trying to align these two documents more. Clerk McNary. Yeah, I I'm just wondering if the checkboxes up here were from 
the board slash district goals or from our strategic plan when they were added? Um, I think they're from the board goals. Okay. Because board goals, and you know, this is, we had a board previously who um, the majority felt that um, academics were number one and safety came second. That was before the pandemic. Um, I can't really, I actually don't want to speak, like put words in previous people's mouths, but before the pandemic, that was a common um, idea. And, uh, and, and now we're wanting to put it first. So can we talk about changing the order in this document as well with the board goals? Because I think Elliot has a good point saying that we want the, all the documents to align. Yeah, I guess that would be. So can really we talk valuable. about that or is that on the agenda? <laughs> um, I would probably, it, it, it's, you can make that comment okay, um, without getting into all the other documents. How is that? Okay. So we're not <laughs> going to take action on it, but we're just saying at some point when we update this, we'll make it possibly to reflect this more. Yeah. I would be in favor of aligning the documents for clarity and transparency for all of us. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, trustee Otmar and Janelle, will you repeat the, the question that's on the table? Yeah. Uh, whether you want to, as um, the interim submission has done, if you look at goal three, we've taken, he's taken out the words credibility, com communication, and I can't remember what the third one was. <laughs> um, confidence. Um, so that it, now it says it start. It, the goal is fiscal solvency, accountability, integrity, and program services. It aligns more with the check boxes and it doesn't create the confusion between why the two goals are different. Okay. That's amazing. I think two is fine because you can leave credibility, confidence, communication, and accountability, integrity. And then you have, so you're, when you're talking about comp confidence and communication, you're talking about community partnerships, students and family relationships, right? Yes, credibility. If you look at the check boxes, right. it would be credibility and communication. And then dash. Confidence. Yeah. Accountability and integrity. Correct. Okay. That's what we're saying. Trustee Otmar, um, did you answer, Janelle, did you get an answer from Trustee Otmar that mm -hmm. I think she... I think she's still looking. That was the question though. Okay. Thank you. I do think it's important that, that it's aligned. Um, I guess I'm still just trying to figure out why the, I'm looking at four board goals and on, on page 147 and health and safety of students and schools is on there. So you're not sure how it didn't get on the strategic plan. Exactly. You'll I have to table understand. it in your mind. You'll What's have, that? You'll have to table it in your mind. Yeah. Okay. I will do that. I will table it. Is <laughs> consider it tabled. Yes. Please keep it. Consistent. It really is a mystery. It's a mystery. Okay. It should have been there. I would say it should have been there. It's not. Just, I'm past it now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you everyone for, for taking the journey. With me. <laughs> okay. Um, Trusty Brian. I'm in all in favor with the everything being aligned as as much as possible for sure, just for for sake of clarity. Um, I do want to say we could put these in a hat and pull them out and put them in any order. And I know from you know my uh, from working with the previous board members that I don't think we ever really thought about them in any particular order. It's like if we're not fiscally responsible, we can't pay for our students to be safe. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter how much we want them to be safe if we can't pay for them. If we can't communicate to the public, then we've lost credibility and, and then people don't feel safe either. So mm -hmm. however you guys want to do it, I'm down with it. It's like alphabetical, count how many letters there are in each one and put it in that order. To me, if it's a goal and we're putting it, you know, picking these four, it's like, it's really important and and the degree of importance might vary on the day or what you know what we're talking about at any particular given meeting so it's not to discount and i really don't want to discount what anybody else is thinking that's not my intention i just want to emphasize that they're all really really important that's why it's a, a top board four. goal in top the first, four. yes yeah, yeah top four okay um let's see brian i don't have any comments i agree 
um, tr and we started with trustee Hazen. So yeah, did you want it again? Quick point on that. Maybe too much minutia, but does numbering them imply otherwise? Like, does it make more sense to have them be board goal A, B, C, D, or just, I mean, it could be either way. It, I think I think that the, the comments that have been made are appropriate. You know, their goals, they're the top four. They kind of work together. You have to have all four of them to have a successful district. Um, whether you number them or not doesn't necessarily give them more importance. It, it I think it just, when someone says, we're going to go talk about goal, board goal one, we have, everyone knows it's health and safety. So maybe there's a statement then that we say that it you might could be worth add a statement. at some point sure. saying that these are our top four goals. And then we get into the numbering to make it clear that the numbering is not a prioritization as was mentioned. Some kind of statement about all four goals being positive. The, 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 equal the, the board standard. agrees that all the goals are important. I don't know if we need that because generating the document kind of communicates that, but maybe we do need it. I don't know. Well, we're talking about it, right? We'll right. keep talking about it. Well, we, yes, this is not, this the is not finalizing it. Yes, yeah. it's just discussion. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a good point. Okay, so um, now we have. So go the, ahead. The direction of the board is there's four goals. Um, the next thing, and you can talk about it tonight or you can save it for your next meeting, would be to talk about the strategies. I probably wouldn't go beyond strategies tonight, but if you want to start talking about strategies, um, you can either say we like these, we don't, we want to add some, you know, um, as we've already kind of discussed board goal number, former board goal number three, or the fiscal board goal strategy number one will probably move mm -hmm. to health and safety because it makes more sense there, um, for that strategy to be moved to the other goal, but it's up to the board. If you want to think about it a little bit more, I, strategies get down a little bit more into the minutia about what you want done under these goals. And so if you're prepared to do that tonight, you can start talking about it. I don't know that you'll finish that discussion, but it's again, it's up to the board. Let's uh, talk briefly about scheduling. So it's 6.51. How, I mean, we could obviously talk about this until tomorrow. So what time uh, do you all want to stay tonight? And I think that'll dictate some of this. So uh, Trustee Hazen. I, mean, I was just going to say, I was prepared to talk all the way down to the minutia. So I was planning okay. on staying till our like normal. nine or even 10 or normal. I thought it was a, you know, potentially normal full length board meeting if we need the time, which I'm not sure we will. I know you have been excited to talk about these things and they're important, right? Like this is one of our main roles as a board is to kind of set forth the direction. Uh, Clerk McNary, do you have a time in mind? 8.30. Okay. Uh, Trustee Otmar, we're just throwing times out right now. I'm good with 8.30. I think if we can... Um... I think if we can stick to talking about the strategies and not getting too much into the detail of the tiniest things okay. and we can make efficient use of our time, then uh, I think we could do that by 8.30. But I think 8.30, I could call it quits and be good. Okay, Brian, are you okay until 8.30? Well, yeah, and we can go longer if we if we need to, if we get on a roll, right? It's like, what are we, are, we're officially... We're here set till to go till 10 if we need to so if we let's you know maybe that's our goal and let's see it's like we start throwing out great ideas or if we i think since it's a special meeting we're not set to go until 10 and it can just be whatever it is whatever. So yeah let's so just see where all right well we're here it takes us it's about seven now, so we're for sure here for another 90 minutes so janelle i would say let's dig in to you know the strategies now yeah. yeah, I I would and I would recommend it is again it's it's up to the board, but I wouldn't because once you start talking strategies, you're going to start talking about the initiatives anyways. <laughs> but I wouldn't necessarily because that's a lot to take in and to, to put down and to change. I would kind of stick it with the strategies at this point, and then yeah. whenever that discussion is done, you call it a night and then go at your next meeting plan to bring strategies back. Okay, not only this a rediscussion of the strategies, but start talking about the minutia maybe. Yeah. And we all have, because Brian was talking about his ideas earlier. I wrote them all out. I know Elliot has his, and I'm sure um, Trustee Otmar McNary, we're not talking about those right now. We're just going to talk about the strategy and maybe all as a team develop a strategy for the safety one, because that one doesn't happen. So Correct. we're trying to get that Correct. at least done tonight. Okay. So Janelle, please go ahead with strategy one. And this is on page 154, the packet top. So I'm just curious if we'd like to, before we get into strategies, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to disrail us, derail us here, but 
Um, do we want any supporting statement associated with Borg goal one health and safety of students and schools? Because we have kind of a supporting statement for each one of the other goals. I mean, it says a lot there just by saying health and safety of students and schools, but I mean, is there we're not a supporting that. statement that you well, we were going to start with? Well, th yeah, that's true. But he, he's, he's, he's bringing us back to goals. And so do you want to expand your goal for health and safety and students and schools to provide a, a little bit more description of what that means to this board? A supportive statement is what you're correct. Saying. Okay. I can see in the periphery here, Trustee Hazen's got something to say about that. Go ahead. I was just going to propose again, the alignment. I like the language that's on page 147 of address student and staff health, wellness, and social emotional needs, yeah. and then provide safe and well-maintained facilities for students. So I could see taking that again, taking a language rather than reinventing would be my, unless yeah. we have an issue with it. I mean, on page 147, that that's kind of timeless language to me. It makes sense. So um, the rest of the board, Trustee Otmar, uh, page 147, number two, has three little bullet marks under it. And so that's what Trustee Hazen is proposing. We kind of um, use those. And so at the, at the top of oh, under A, Okay, well, I, I was just looking at A2, and it says health and safety of students and schools, district students and staff are provided a safe and welcoming environment. I mean, I think what's here, if we're not reinventing the wheel, is... Use that one. I, I think all of them are pretty appropriate. I mean, fiscal solvency, accountability, and integrity doesn't have a descriptive sentence there, but, uh, you know, we could maybe come up with one. Okay, so um, what I'm hearing is Trustee Hazen was kind of looking at uh, melding together the three bullet points under B2. Trustee Otmar was looking at A2. Clerk McNary, anything? I'm comfortable with uh, either of those as long as we're aligning our documents. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> Trustee Bryan. I wasn't paying attention. Okay, uh, no problem. <laughs> so, only because, oh. <laughs> only because we have two packets. And I was like, what are we talking about here? We have the packet, we have the revised packet, and then we have the other one. I'm looking at 147. It's like, what are, where are you what, guys? Are you using I'm in the original packet. packet. Yeah. Okay, I was, let I'm, me do that too. And that will help you. And yeah, so, I was like, so I missed the last 90 seconds of whatever sorry. you guys are talking about. I'm okay, sorry. Okay. So we're talking about, can you find the document that's the PG school board goals? It's that one pager. Yeah, I mean, I have both. I can go to 147 in the original one. And here, so here. it's one page 150 in the revised. Okay. All right. I'll use this. Okay. It's not your fault. So what is the question? Okay. So we want to create for the safety goal, mm -hmm. we want to give it a little more wording instead of just, yes. yeah. So, yeah. um, so Elliot was saying, how about on page 150 B2, if you look at those three bullets, those could be combined mm -hmm. and then, uh, highlighting them on the screen. Thank you. And then, um, trustee Otmar had a good point as well, that a two is succinct and possibly covers it all and is already written. Yeah, yeah. So do you want me to come back to you? I can ask Clerk yeah, McNary. Yeah, I want to think about it for a minute, if you don't mind. Clerk McNary, I'm going to ask you. You did ask me. Can I? I uh, anybody else would ask. it be okay if I just, okay. <laughs> Since, uh, you know, I it, maybe it could use a little extra wording in there. So Elliot, I'm okay with, I'm okay with what you're talking about, because one of the things that's important to me is uh, physical, personal safety. Um, and I would, I would feel good about that being in there as well. Do we want to add in there too health and you know safety of well, students and schools? But it's staff, staff is missing from there. Not in, two, not in B. Sorry, not in B two. It's a second bullet. Okay, so there. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with that. Well, I mean, you mean in the actual title of the goal? To, uh, to say staff in there. I think that that's important. Very, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I would agree with that too. So because what does it say? Right? Health and school. School. Oh, school. Oh, yeah. Okay. I wish it was easier to swap between screens. Am I doing something wrong? Louis. Share your whole desktop and then you can. Oh, that's how we do it. Okay. 
All right. So health and safety of students and schools. It could be health and safety of students, staff and schools. Yeah, sure. Okay. And then if we were going to meld B3 together with, or sorry, B2, let me pull this out. Janelle, can I ask you a procedural question? Certainly. We have a lovely member of the audience here, but it's not on the it's not on the agenda that I can go out to public comment. So am I possible is it possible to go out once or twice while we're talking about all this and let any public say? So the the board does not requ it's not required that you get public comment because it's an informational discussion item. Understood. However, the board is at their discretion if they want to we offer can. it to the public, you're certainly welcome to. Okay, board, would you be okay with that? We've gone a third or halfway. Okay. By all means. Okay, so um, if there's any public comment at this time, no pressure. <laughs> and, online or in person, we've got 10 per participants online. Oh, some of them are the conference room itself, myself, <laughs> Josh Jorn, Mandy. Who's in here? No one. Someone just named staff. Okay. But we have some other folks on here as well. I'm not going to call it their names because that's their own uh, privacy. I don't know. I feel weird calling out their names. But if anyone online would like to raise their digital hand, we would really appreciate your comments right now. We're talking about the um, strategic plan, the goal language. Um, and so if anyone here or online would like to raise their hand or get up to the podium, please feel free. Yeah. So, oh, Lewis, it's yeah, yourself me. as yourself. Yes, Thank you. Myself. Please, I'm so glad you're um, welcome. I'm Lewis Algazi, Director of Technology. <laughs> um, earlier, you guys were talking about setting the goals, setting spe specific goals, like maybe not now, but later on. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that could set, could, could get people into trouble. So if you guys, set a goal for this policy or for the goal and say, okay, I want all of our students to be above or at grade level, right? There's, in my opinion, there's no way we can, in, we can create, we can be successful with that policy because it's not up to us. It's not up to me. It's not up to the teachers. A lot of that is controlled by the parents, which we have no control over. So I think in the wording of, since we're talking about the wording of the goals, we have to be careful at times to phrase it in a way that where we can be successful. And inclusive. And inclusive. Thank you for your comment. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Anyone else on, perhaps online or in public? No? Okay. Well, uh, board, if I don't go back out to the public later and you feel like I should, please alert me. Um, shall we move forward? Mm -hmm. Okay. Could I ask one more? I'm sorry, procedural question though. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I agree I, you know, about not digging into the bullets, but I, I would like to, if we have the time, add our ability to, like Brian did, give our thoughts at the end, just to be clear, like just thoughts and concerns that could be chewed on for the next meeting. I know what you mean. Let's if see if we have time. Yeah. And I mean, I think that falls under our agenda item to talk about that. So it, we're it not... certainly does. It yeah. it does, and it's not it's not a bad idea. Similar to trustee comments at the end of a meeting, just to yeah, just to do something Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Okay. So we're gonna try to get through our um, strategy on the four goals, and then at that point, if we, if we have a reasonable amount of time, we'll go around and we can talk about. I mean, I've got probably 10 minutes just on my own. So we'll see if we have time. And and another thought too for the board to consider is that you're this is a discussion and it's just the beginning of the discussion. So for example, um, up on the screen, it says board goal one, health and safety. You've added that goal. There's two potential wordings there. You see the or. Yeah. Um, so you could leave that there, not make the decision tonight. Wait until you've had more discussion and then make the decision what the, to finalize. And that's as a really nice comment, point. Thank you. You know, refining the wording of the goals 
as you have these discussions. So not necessarily tonight, okay. but as it, you continue to discuss this item. Plus it gives us a chance in private to like read on, at our own pace. Cause I have a hard time like digest anyways. So thank you. I appreciate that. So board, are we okay? Just kind of leaving this with the or in it and going to the next one. Brian says, yeah, Claire Greenary, Trustee Atmar, are you okay with that? And I just asked to change one word because if I don't do it now, then I'll forget. Absolutely. Uh, would you, and if the board is okay with this changing staff, uh, where it says address student and staff health, um, that seems really big and broad. I'd like something in there about safety, about student and staff safety. Um, health and safety or replace health with safety? Uh, maybe health and safety. I guess I, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. So with that, we're leaving the or in. Are we okay with that, Trustee Heason? Are you okay? I'm going to be really difficult again. I would just reverse the two words because the health leads the next one better. And I think staff safety and health, comma, wellness and social. But We can bring that back too at another time, but I mean, it's easy enough to fix right now. And I think one goal, I'm talking about goals, but a goal of this board for tonight would be to kind of, as I said, get this discussion going, make sure you understand what the goals are. Wording is not as important tonight as getting the big picture, the goals down, maybe the strategies, and then absolutely. And then. Because this there. document will be in a future packet. It will be something yes. we can all submit red lines or whatever into. Right. Okay, so it seems like the majority, if not unanimous board is okay with leaving the or in. So we're checking off board goal number one. Done. And then board two, or I believe board goals two and three already have language, supporting language. If there's any supporting language you want to add for board goal number four, which is the fiscal accountability, that would be something you can do. You might want to talk about Okay, number, sorry, Janelle, you, know, you said we can look at the wording for the fiscal one? Yeah, so board goal number four is fiscal solvency, accountability, and integrity to program services and budget alignment. You have supporting statements for goals one, two, and three. Um, and if you have, yeah, if you want to bring up, for example, the bullet points under number four that is on page 150, mm -hmm. then that would, might be a suggestion if i could just quickly do we move that strategy that was under credibility confidence and communication fiscal strategy for up to board goal one right or we, we haven't done that yet we haven't got that far yet but yes that would be my suggestion <laughs> we, we're still talking goals we haven't moved to strategies yet okay so goal for the fiscal solvency accountability and integrity how does the board feel I'll start with clerk mcnary um, Janelle was saying on page 150 B4, there's four bullet points. Is that the right, is that bullet points? Is that the proper term for those little dots? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's saying bullet. Okay. Um, how do you all feel about that? So we'll start with clerk McNary. Maintain fiduciary responsibilities. Um, align budget with LCAP. Yeah. I mean, all these are pretty timeless, which in some ways is wonderful and other ways is so broad that, but that's kind of what this document is. Yeah, we are at that high level with this portion of the document though. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'm comfortable with it because we're aligning our documents. Okay, Trustee Otmar. Uh, personally, I think we could just use the first two bullet points there, which is maintain fiduciary responsibilities and align budget with LCAP and strategic plan. The other two, we could probably just work into the strategic plan specifically. I like that. And just sort of, cause that's a whole bunch of reading. I agree. Trustee Brian. Yeah. I'm good. I like that idea. Okay. Um, I like the idea. Trustee Hazen. 100%. I agree with Trustee Otmar's suggestion. Okay. So Josh, do you want me to read it to you or you already got it? Got it. Boop. Okay. Janelle, go ahead. <laughs> okay. So now you need to talk about strategies. So currently, uh, 
board goal number one doesn't have any strategies. Um, there had been a suggestion earlier to remove strategy number four from the strategic plan up to board goal number one. So that I guess that would be the the question. For I think that makes sense as a placeholder for now. It may change. Correct. So that's my um, two cents. Trustee Hazen, two cents agreed. Clerk McNary, yes. Trustee Otmar, agreed. I have a lot more to say about it, but we'll yeah, just. Yeah, definitely an item we're going to add to later. Um. Yeah. I mean, I. I that's very loud. I think. Um. Really, just copy pasting it in there is. It seems like that's where it should have been living to begin with. So, Trustee Brian, thumbs up from Trustee Brian. Can okay. I name it strategy one? Yes. Okay. Provided the board agrees. Sure. Um, it's, so, the strategy is to maintain a safe, clean, and secure school environment. Okay. So, that's a pretty, that's a broad strategy. Is there any other strategies under health, safety, and students that the board would like to add for consideration? Yeah, but I think we should do that in the future, right? Because it, it, it's, we're talking strategies, not not in minutia. But for example, you have maintain a safe, clean, and secure uh, school environment. And I got to go see what this board goal is again. Sorry, um, I'm switching back and forth between papers. So give me a second. Um, so, and I don't know that it's a strategy necessarily for this goal, but it, it resonates with something that was said earlier, which is, you know, support programs that enhance community staff and in student engagement and correctness. So whether that's a strategy under this goal or another goal, that may be a strategy you want to add, for example, because that doesn't. When it says maintain a safe, clean, secure school environment, we're talking about the school environment, right? Now, if you want to talk about um, safety of students, maybe health-wise, I mean, we just went through the pandemic, right? So a strategy along those lines, and maybe the uh, interim superintendent has a, Mr. Jordan. Right, I'm thinking that maintaining a safe, clean, and secure school environment doesn't encompass um, what we're trying to do as a district and a board goal, well, a directive. I would say, related to um, classroom environments. So the air in the rooms that we breathe, I don't think that's under, I mean, is that safe and clean? I mean, it could fall under clean. Yeah, sure. it does. For sure. Okay. okay. So yeah, and maybe not school environment, but more along the lines of some, uh, I believe it was Trustee Swanson talked about, um, you have the kids, and I'm paraphrasing what you said, you have the kids six hours a day. What about after school? What about before school? So safe school environment doesn't necessarily contemplate health or safety or security regarding after school programs or um, uh, extracurricular ideas. I'm just throwing ideas out there for, for discussion for the board. This is really your ideas and whether you want another strategy there, maybe you can't think of one tonight, you can put one later, but the question just, just is, can someone think of a different strategy, another strategy they want under this goal? I think we have, this is just my take on it. I think because like Elliot was mentioning, we all have these concerns that are going to feed into this. Like for me, I would just like to put a pin in this one. It's a placeholder and we'll come back to it. We can do our thorough discussions and we're definitely going to add to this, but for me, I can't even wrap my head around adding to it right now. I would, and I would like to actually. You'd like um, to add I to would, it? I would like to add something to do with uh, mental health mm -hmm. in there. Because safe, clean, and secure does not address. Um, uh, Can I make a comment, Trustee Otmar? Yes. In our goals, we do have that we are addressing student and staff health, wellness, and social emotional needs. So maybe something in that vein rather than right. physical health. So that could be a strategy. Something along SEL and. So you could have a, just a suggestion for the board. You could have a strategy, maintain a safe, clean and secure school environment. Um, I'm sorry, could you move it up just so I can make sure I'm saying it right directly. Um, and then a, another strategy could be um, address health, wellness and social emotional needs of students and staff. You know, that could be a second strategy. 
And and that's all, that was all my question is whether that's something the board wants to add. It doesn't, again, you, you're going to be talking about this. You're going to be adding strategies later. So if you don't add it tonight, it doesn't mean you can't do it later. Okay. I, th I think oh, while okay. we're here, oh. it would be great to add it. I'm, I'm we're here. Yeah. I was going to suggest just maybe one more word. I think it would be in the first one, but I want, I kind of want welcoming. I know it's in the, right now it's in the bullets below in the initiatives, but something to deal with the equity issues and the fact that we have multiple cultures and multiple, um, you know, different community members. So maintain a safe, clean, welcoming, and secure. Maybe that's too broad, but I think it's an important recognition. I think too, maybe like a bigger point is whenever we feel like with this is finalized, we should run it through um, our cultural proficiency team and make sure we didn't forget something or say something culturally unproficient, right? Like that's not our goal, so. Mm -hmm. Did I, uh, all the trustees have a um, moment to comment on this one or I don't want to skip anybody. Ryan, did you say something on this one? No, no. Um, I liked what Laura was saying though, having something that addresses the social, you know, like what's in there right now and staff too. Again, I mean, I think we've all again seen that. It's like everybody took just on the front lines of a battlefield it feels like still and could we would people be comfortable with changing the first word address to be support i just address makes it sound like you're doing the something planning. but support mm -hmm. is standing up yeah okay All right so yeah board goal number two um has yeah, strategy enough. has two strategies Oh, wait, sorry. This has one strategy. <laughs> um, develop and implement a co comprehensive and standard-based educational program with respect to curriculum, instruction, course offerings, class size, support programs, and facilities. So the question is, is that strategy still wanted by the board? And first of all, I guess, and then if there are any other strategies that would be added to that student achievement goal. I'll go first on this one. This one's tricky for me because, and some of the other ones are tricky for me too, because I would love for our LCAP to be like our overarching guiding document on all goals. So for like to read this and then try to remember like what's in our LCAP. And then I know that like the P2s and the P6s, those are LCAP references. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not trying to change these because I, because the LCAP's already solidified. So I have a hard time digging in at all on this one uh and and maybe this one is just bypassed for tonight and thought about as you talk about and updated or or changed or added to as you talk about the in initiatives later okay what do you think mr jordan yeah i, I do agree 100 with what you stated right now we have priority one two and seven associated with the strategy in our lcap okay i wouldn't want to see us change it right now specifically because we have an approved lcap and then next, I mean, of course, this document is for the next year. So, but like, even in that situation, we would want the LCAP to feed into it again. That's so, correct. Okay. Right. So that's how I feel about it. Um, Trustee Hazen. The only thing, oh, I just jumped ahead, but the only thing I was thinking to add would be possibly technology, like technology in there. I mean, I know it's in, it's below, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, it's, I don't feel that strongly. I just. I'm wondering if how important that is for the strategy one that we want our kids to be technologically savvy, if not aware. Okay. Well, I'm just thinking the development of like Google Classroom, for example, right? That's a technology component that leads into the curricular development of programming. So exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's similar as well. I have an overall question about this document. Sorry, I'm trying to wrap my head around this. So like, for example, when I think about like IEP goals for my child, we just talk about the things that we have concerns about. We don't try to list every single thing that she's going to be experiencing in her general ed class. And that's just part of everyday curriculum. So should I be thinking with this document, okay, think about the things that I have concerns about and I've heard ideas about, or should I be trying to list every single component of our curriculum in our schools. No, you, you want to give enough guidance to your staff that they can come up with those goals and, and action items to complete 
this is kind of like your wish list, I guess would be a good way. Okay. So things that I have ideas and concerns about, not things that I think are running fine and rolling already out. Right. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, Clerk McNary. Oops. With regard to strategy number one. Um, yeah, I agree. Thank you for the input, Mr. Jorn. I, I would hesitate to um, do anything with it, but I will definitely noodle on this one. Should we, since this is now kind of like, sounds like maybe the majority is thinking this, should we put a little, um, I don't know, maybe it's too much, but like a little something in parentheses that says guided by the LCAP, like, or is that too much? Because we it's already there. Well, the, the other option for this board to consider is leave this strategy, leave it alone. Yeah. And if there's a different strategy that you would have wanted to change that doesn't necessarily yeah. relate to LCAP, add it as a second strategy under this goal. Okay. So this top bolded strategy is our LCAP strategies if we have a secondary one, which I would hesitate to do, right? Because staff can only attain so many goals every year. The LCAP <laughs> are the ones that have bubbled up. So right. like, yikes, you know, but that's just me. So. Okay, um, we missed uh, trust, Trustee Otmar and then Brian after. Yeah, I, I think that we should just move on from this and we can revisit it when we've, uh, just at another time. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Brian. Yeah, I'm good to move on. I, um, I would ask that because I know this will all come back to us uh, next meeting um, uh, that once we're finished working through this document, that if we could get it right away so that we could ruminate on it um, at our leisure too, I think would help everybody too, just to- Do you like, mean like after, like tonight, if we could get it? Yeah. Like, just, hey, like, board, right, here's so far. Is. Okay. So yeah, this document's being, um, just from a Brown Act perspective, right? This document's being edited on the screen. Mm -hmm. And so it's, as long as it's made to the public as well as the board, it's perfectly fine. Okay, great. So we could post the end result on the website after a meeting. Boom. Done. Right, done. Okay. Yes. Um, one suggestion to, to, to be consistent so you don't forget later, make this strategy too. Make what strategy? Oh, yes. Make that strategy too. Thank two you. Or three. Sorry. And then um, can I just ask? Point of, point of order. Should we call this um, draft? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Love it. Because if we're going to post it on the website, we're not posting it as a strategic plan. Correct. Okay. Can you also add a footer that says um, at like draft as of September 14th, 2023, so we can keep track of the versions? Yes. Okay. Um, Trustee Brian, you ha you contributed. I'm good. So Janelle, back to you. So uh, then moving on to um, the goal, credibility, confidence, communication, accountability, and integrity. Um, there's two current strategies under that. So the first one is staff recruitment, retention, and professional development. And is that a strategy that everyone is agreeable with? It will be now would be labeled strategy four, formerly strategy two. You're on page 158, right? That one? I believe so. Okay. So Trustee Hazen, we'll start with you. Yep. I like this. I'm I'm just want to put a pin jumping back to the previous goal that we do we at some point we might want to think about an additional strategy for that one, not just because there's so many initiatives under it. I'm not saying we do that tonight, but I have no problem with its strategy two or strategy four and five as they now stand. The one that says staff recruitment, retention, and professional development. Yeah, okay. I like that one. And plus, as we all remember, we have an HR um plan coming to us in December. So that might feed really well into this. And then that would be great. Uh, Clerk McNary. I don't have anything to add on uh, strategies now, four or five. Okay. And um, Trustee Hazen agrees with that. Yep, four and five. Trustee Otmar. Can you come back to me, please? Yeah, I'll come back in just a sec. And so um, five is maintenance of effective communications, which we've kind of all talked about is a, definitely a high priority. We've got a communications review coming at us um, soon, I think late fall. So that will feed into this as well. Super important. 
Trustee Altmar, are you okay now? Yes, it's just a maintenance of effective communications feels extremely vague to me, and I feel like we could do a better job. Okay, there. let's see. Maybe, let me see what we got going on in board goals, if there's some sort of less vague. Credibility through effective and transparent communication with the public and stakeholders. From the board goals? Yeah. How do you feel about um, that? We could even say, we could even call it maintain credibility through, oh wait. Yeah, yes. that's exactly what they called it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maintain credibility. So uh, maintain credibility through effective and transparent communication with all stakeholders community members or educational partners. I think we're not using stakeholders as a word anymore. I think educational partners is or educational partners. Or community or both. Or slash between partners yeah. and community. I like it. I like adding community based on the comment potentially there because yeah. that's a really good way to put it up. Yeah. Okay. So you okay with that, Laura? Yeah, that feels better to me. Yeah. Okay. So are we going to replace, sorry, we're going to replace credibility through effective transfer, maintenance of effective communications with credibility through effective and transparent communication. That's the plan. Um, With maintain credibility through effective. Ah, I got it. Yeah. Yep. Thank you for that. Sure. And before we move on, can I just look at all the trustees? Anything else about this item that you might want to do? Elliot, One put word your finger again. up. There Maximize you are. credibility, just to say, like, maintain means, yeah, we have really low credibility. Let's keep it the same. So I would just like to maximize. Like oh, that mic's on. Evaluate. No, we're not going to go there. Okay, maximize. Good. Anyone else? Any trustees? No? Okay. Okay. Then the final board goal, number four, has one strategy since one was removed. Mm -hmm. um, and it's now uh, strategy number six, um, maintenance of effective communicate. Oh, sorry. The district budgetary process will reflect the strategic plan and LCAP goals. Okay, Clerk McNary. Yeah, um, I don't have any feedback on this one. Trustee Altmer? Yeah, I'm I'm okay with I'm okay with that. Can you come back to me after a sure. bit? It's just I'd like yeah. to think about it. Trustee Brian. I'm fine with it. I mean it it I think it needs to be very basic. It's uh pretty simple principles there. Yeah. We got to make sure that uh, we don't spend all the money. I am next on the comment list and I, maybe this isn't inappropriate, but I feel like, duh, like, of course we do this. Do so do we need it in this document? The <laughs> I don't know. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> Trustee Hazen. I, I was, the one thing I was going to mention is because I don't see it in here is just solvency. I don't know. I mean, I think we want to say we're not going to go bankrupt as a, I mean, that might be higher. That could even be a better, that's that a could be, goal. no, that could be something to replace. Hello, that we're going to reflect strategic plan at LCAP. Well, but I don't know, maybe we do need to have this in here. Maybe that was something that wasn't happening in the past or needed to be called out. And just to be clear, I am seeing now solvency, obviously in the board goal. So maybe that's enough, but I probably, yeah. 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 So then I'm okay with it. I, I, I see your point, but I also, like the fact that it calls out the LCAP, which was something we were highlighting for some of the other areas as well, that we do want to really talk about that linkage. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Laura, did you want to say anything else? I might trustee Hayes in this one and ask to change a word. Yeah, go ahead. Um, can we, and if not, then this is okay. I guess the board can tell me if they like it or not, but change the word reflect to align with. Sure. I don't know reasonable. if that, I mean, I just. I like what Josh has thrown up there. It's working as I'm just, yeah. Everybody's bouncing the ideas around, but yeah, that's great. I was okay. going to say maintain. 
Yeah. <laughs> You're like, let's note that we're here yeah. at solvency. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maximum solvency. <laughs> no, it sounds like a soap commercial or something. You could change that will to and <laughs> and align with. Aligning with. Okay, so uh, trustees, do you have any other input on this one? Um, yeah. cool. mm -hmm. So it says LCAP priorities with the no priority behind yeah, it. Just some of them we so don't have. Yet. Okay, got yeah. it. Well, I need, I'll need to take a look and see what it aligns with, but there wasn't one associated with the strategy before. So placeholder. Cool, cool. So then the next question for the board, is there any strategies that anyone wants to add to any of the goals? at this point. Okay, Trustee Otmar. I like that comes later after we all talk about our concerns. And and you can definitely add later, just for tonight, any thoughts on adding anything? Good question, good question. Offhand, no, but that doesn't mean that something else isn't gonna yeah, later, later you'll. Th yeah. This is going to change six times over yeah. before you okay. final finalize it. Yeah. Trustee Brian, does the LCAP address our desired reserve percentage-wise? It does not. No, but we could put that Can as it? a. No, it, uh, it could be a strategy. An LCAP strategy or a strategic or, goal strategy? A strategic well, strategy. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mind that having. I wouldn't mind having that in there. I think that's going to be a really mm -hmm. probably burdensome conversation. I think it's know? important to have that in there and have it clear but in I think, the public. Yeah, I think it would be good. I mean, because that's bounced around quite a bit. And I, I know we all have varying opinions on where we should be reserve wise, you know, but, um, but I think it's important that, that that's written down somewhere. Is it written down somewhere, Mr. Jordan? No. Yeah. Uh, um, we should have it somewhere, if not a, here. A suggestion is you've this strategy talks about maintaining solvency and budgetary process. You know the as you said the really the, the obvious and what we're going to do. Yeah. Maybe you have a strategy that addresses uh, fiscal. You know, make it broad. You know, f uh, f fiscal responsibility beyond budgetary the m basic budgetary process, or you know. You could have some kind of strategy like that where you would talk about the reserves or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, could we add the reserves to that? Maintain fiscal solvency and which means defined 10%. by a 10% reserve. It, the 10% <laughs> reserve would probably be in an initiative versus a strategy. Okay. Okay. We're definitely going to debate that number. I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, sorry. I shouldn't have thrown the number out there. I was just... <laughs> That's where you are, Tim. Uh... That's where I thought we were. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no. CBO hat. Don't give yes. Me giggles. I love I love hearing that, but the, our statutory obligation is to maintain a 3% reserve, right? So we can set an initiative associated with a strategy. Maybe that's the right level. And that's one to tar an initiative might be to target that. Um, but day. making it a goal or a strategy, yeah. Really appreciate the feedback from both of you. So thank you. <laughs> I lost where we are. Um, strategy. Yes. Any additional strategies to the four established schools? Um, Brian, okay, I, I don't have anything. Trustee Hazen? Yeah, just, I mean, putting my pin, I don't want to answer it tonight, but I do want to consider another strategy for what's now board goal two, the student learning and achievement. Just because okay, we sure, have so course. many initiatives, I just want to, something as a board we can maybe think Yes, about. of course. At a future date, we're going to ax the ones we don't want. We're going to put new ones in. We're going to do all that jazz. Right, Janelle? Correct. Okay. That would, that will be your next discussion to come back and revisit the strategies. That'd be great. Talk about, be one. talk mm -hmm. about some of the initiatives under pick one goal, right? Do right. one goal at, or two goals, you know, do one or two goals right. because those discussions are going to be long. Clerk McNary. I don't have anything to add right now. Okay. Thank you. And I think I've asked all the trustees. Um, do we want to do a check-in with the public or you want to keep on going? Um, if I may, yeah. you, you've completed what your goal was tonight. So you may want to, if you're going to check in with the public, you can check in with the public. And then I would suggest maybe as we, you talked about earlier, making your statements and then 
and then we're be done and then be done. Okay. Sure. If that's okay with the board, just, um, got to the public really quickly. There may be no one who wants to make a comment, but if anyone online would like to make a comment, thank you for investing your time and watching our meeting tonight. So please raise your digital hand and we will call on you. And if there's any member of the public who would like to go up to the podium, feel free now. No. Oh. <laughs> Lewis, anyone online? Okay. Beaming now. Okay. Um, thank you. We're closing out unofficial public comment at this time. And so um, we're just going to go around um, in our kind of regular order. So we're going to start with Brian Swanson. I know you shared some things earlier. Did you want to uh, reiterate them, add to it, anything like that? No, not not at the moment. I think we did good work tonight. I'm proud of everybody that it was good and productive meeting. Good. Okay. Um, I'm next, but I don't quite. I feel, I feel like I've been talking so much. I'd actually like to go like maybe after Rusty Hazen. You're next, so I'll go after you. Okay, Elliot. And I also know that you have. You're very excited to share your goals. <laughs> Are your concerns, yeah. and I think you've been waiting maybe since you got on the board to like have this meeting and talk about these things. So well, I love I love these meetings for the record. I think it's really important for us to do yes. this. And so I, the two things I wanted one is a very minor one. Okay. Um. Well, I did like the idea of the increased funding for school lunches, or at least revisiting that as a potential future discussion. Maybe Wait, even, say that slow slow sorry, down slow down. The potential of increasing funding or assessing funding for school lunches. Um, ah, as okay. part of a strategic plan under the health one, or, you know, maybe yeah. that would be an action item, just putting that pin. Um, there's one that's very specific for strategy four. It said teacher slash student interactions, but I just would like it to say maybe interactions among teachers and students to make the point that it's not just between teacher and student. Again, that's the minor. Now here's the big one that I was the director of curriculum. Will, so this is strategy one the director of curriculum will facilitate articulation across all grade levels via collaborative leadership avenues, core arts and electives. I would just love to have, whether it's a time at another future board meeting when we're doing this next, to really dig into that, thinking about things, exactly what was mentioned about technological alignment you know, within the grades, better alignment within the grades if we need to, you know, make sure that all students, particularly those of need, are getting what they need as part of that um, transitions. That's something I did not really see in here, but making sure that our kids, particularly among sites, but even grade to grade are getting what they need for transition, both academically and even social emotional. So that's one, again, I'm not, I don't want to over dictate the bullet or the initiative, but I do want to blow that one up a little bit because I think, I mean, make it bigger, not blow it up in a bad way, because I think there's so much packed into that initiative. Which one? Yeah, which one, which it. page? I I was kind of thinking we were kind of done talking about specifics in the document. So I had put my document away and I was just ready to hear right. like your ideas, but there's still ideas, even though they're relevant to the document. But do you have the expectation that we're going to be noting anything like this in the document or you just want to share? I, I just wanted to share because I think, okay, I guess part of my view then here I is will I, put my document I away. I think it's important for us to just, you know, get a general temperature of where we stand on this, things that still sit well, sit you know, or could use so that we could all think about that before the next meeting when Certainly. we get to it. Okay. So Thank that you. was, I, let me double check, but I think that was um, the biggest things that I wanted to, oh, no, there was one more, which was doing what we're doing from the equity, um, you know, the discussions with equi equity and proficiency is um, making sure that we are um, amending as we using our learn, what we learn from um, both the equitable training and and incidents at the school to move forward rather than yeah, stay on track. That's again, not necessarily a, a bullet, but something just we discussed at the last meeting, I think is important to make sure we keep a pin. And if it's okay with the board, um, since you did mention that particular one, we'll just highlight it. And that way it's highlighted for your future discussions, if that's okay with the board. Sure. <clears throat> okay. Um... McNary, Otmar, and myself are left. Do either of you want to go next, or do you want me to go next? Let's see, Otmar, go ahead. 
Um, I, I really don't have too much to add other than um, just like what Trustee Swanson said. I'm, I think this was a great meeting. I feel like it was really productive. I'm proud of all of us for um, just for all the input. And I'm excited to get this draft so that I can move through it and look at it and I guess dissect it a little bit and, and see um, what we can all add. I'm excited about that. And that's it. And thank you, both of you very much. And Lewis. Thank you, Lewis. <laughs> um, McNary. Um, I guess as far as like concerns, is that what I'm, I don't know. Is this just wrap up comments? Thank you everyone for coming. I've got, I mean, I honestly, I've got I don't a know list. what else is like touching on their list. So it, I, guess I, yeah, if you have a list that you wanted to talk about, it, the idea would be for you to talk about it so that, or in, you know, at least well, generally yeah. so that everyone can start thinking about it for your next meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for me, um, I think a big goal, and I'm not sure where this fits under all of our strategic plan parachute is, um, evaluating and assessing the elementary schools with an equity lens, um, and I don't know if that that's funding, that's programming, that's figuring out why we, um, why we have one school that's, why we have two different schools that have very different personalities and one school, um, may be perceived as having things that the other school does not. I don't know if that's true, but I think we really need to take a hard look at it. And we've been talking about it for a long time. I don't know where it fits in. Um, continuing the um, the cultural proficiency or DEI work that we've started, I think that's huge. And that's going to be kind of a, a longer term goal, but also like an ongoing thing. Um, Personally, for me, I'd love to see when you were talking about community programs, I would love to see expanded after school enrichment programming, because not only does that um, provide opportunities and programming for kids, typically at the elementary school, but it's also childcare um, and opportunities um, to participate in programming that wouldn't require necessarily transportation or other resources. So I love looking into that community partnerships and that type of thing. Um, and another thing that I thought would be great in terms of just looking at our academic programming and enriching that is being able to expand our um, our language programming um, at at the lower levels so that we've got alignment coming starting as soon as possible because you know language is a skill that can really be that can give anybody a leg up so um, I think that would be really valuable to take a look at too. Those are my kind of high level. Um, I think short list for today. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll stop there. Okay, thank you so much, Clerk McNary. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so throughout the year, um, I track ideas and concerns that I hear from community members that I come up with myself. Um, so I brought those today and, um, some are specific, some are high level. I'm hoping to plug in all of them to this document, but that would be amazing. I don't know if that'll happen. So, um, uh, but number one, so last year, my number one concern was air quality in classrooms, but we've got that really rolling in a great way. And we've got, I'm sure updates on the website and everything about that. So this year, my main goal, um, an idea is everything childcare. And I'm not even just talking about elementary level because families who have kids with disabilities, childcare doesn't just magically go away the need for it when your kid is in middle school. It actually continues. And I think a lot of times um, families who have kids with disabilities, um, you know, there is no BASRP at the middle school or the high school. But so there's um, also, for example, um, childcare when we have professional developments for teachers and staff, right? Professional development a lot of times takes place a couple days or a week before school starts. So school's not in session. People with children do not have their kids, the benefit of their kids being in school while they're doing professional development. Um, other districts have just paid for it out of the general fund. It doesn't have to be an item that gets negotiated necessarily. Um, it can just be paid for through the general fund. Things like this that 
enhance people's lives in a great way. Um, when I went to the breakfast, uh, the welcome breakfast at the high school, which was delicious. Thank you, Kwanis, for the pancakes and sausages. Um, you know, I was walking home and um, and I ran into a, a friend of mine who was walking and I was like, hey, we just had the breakfast. They're an employee. And they were like, I didn't have childcare. I couldn't go. So that's a shame, right? Um, before breaks, going into breaks, we our district sends home a note that goes, BASRP is closing at two. And you're for folks who are in the educational industry, okay, maybe you can handle that. But for them, you know, we have to think about who we're serving. If you have a job outside of these confines, what do you do? You know, what does the lead parent do? Um, during breaks, families are struggling to find camps that are very expensive. And I actually have nothing against any of the camps. I think they do it as cheaply as, you know, the best value they can. But um, it's so much money. And again, creates these inequities but between families that can pay for it and families that can't. So perhaps this is, you know, another, it's like so much of this is related to childcare for me for equitable access. I would love to have free ba BASRP if there's a program in place that folks who qualify for free reduced lunch can have free BASRP if we can get that information out to them. Great, but it hasn't, they don't have that info, you know? So childcare is a really big one for me. Um, so I went into detail about childcare, but I'm just going to go like um, higher level on my other things on my list because we do want to get out of here by 8.30. So um, I did list a nutrition update or goal, like if we could get goals from our lovely new nutrition director, um, as well as from, you know, Mr. Jorn or whoever is superintendent, I think that would be fabulous, right? Is to seek out goals from these department heads and fold those in. Um, and that kind of addresses Lewis's concern as well, that that makes, ensures that the goals are like current and relevant, doable, um, Early intervention, UPK, state, and special ed preschools all in one place. They're in a variety of places right now. And I will say the special ed preschool and the state preschool are up on David Avenue, segregated away from typical preschools that are um, better maintained, that have gates in front of them, that prevent kids from eloping, our most vulnerable kids um, in our special ed program have one little door between themselves in the parking lot and David Avenue. It's been like that for like eight years. So um, I'm just going to keep bringing it up. Um, a sustainability initiative, I think could encompass a lot of the kind of the bits and pieces that we're all talking about. Um, you know, everything from maybe we move to electric vehicles, if it makes sense. I understand it's a transition right now. Maybe it's not ideal to have electric vehicles, but um, maybe it is ideal for us to have solar and start generating some income or reducing our utilities debt for that. Maybe we're doing more local organic foods that feeds into our nutrition updates and goals. Um, maybe we just, as a board say, we're not going to use Roundup anymore. I don't even know if we do use it, but if we don't use it, then maybe there's something else we could, you know, like all these things I have questions about they come up um cte programming i'll take a breath so cte programming our um career technology education programming we have it at the high school we had a presentation on it to me there wasn't much measurable in the presentation it wasn't like hey these are the industries that are current relevant asking for um employees it was like we have these programs and they're great and Great, you can't measure, the word great, you can't measure. I will say, I think that the instruct instructors are fabulous people. The kids seem really engaged in the program and we have good enrollment. Um, but actually CTE program is meant to assist for industry and provide career goals. Um, exit interviews for families, right? We've talked about this so many times and it just doesn't happen. And it's not the staff's fault, in my opinion. It's our fault as and we haven't even had a chance as a board, so it's not it's not really anybody's fault. But where I think it should go is the board should be making a directive to staff regarding our ideas and concerns. Staff lets us know how they think they can 
attain it. Or like, maybe they say, say like, that's not even attainable. Okay. Then I'll cross it off the list, you know? Um, but we talked about exit interviews for families many times. Um, declining enrollment was one of the top concerns from leadership associates that they heard in our community, which I thought was so interesting because we're a basic aid district. So typically um, declining enrollment isn't something that we're thinking about. So I don't know if folks are watching the news and hearing about this as a hot topic, or if they're really concerned that we don't have enough students to keep robust programming going, which that's a really valid concern. Um, the equity discussion that McNary brought up, and actually I think Elliot, you had mentioned that as well. So like, um, Elliot, I'm gonna read your, um, like something that you had sent to me, but I thought it had excellent wording. So equity discussion, um, metrics of equity across school sites in particular. Um, what do we want to track? Funding, field trips, performance and test scores, class sizes, are students' needs being met? Um, I added one about communications. Are we sending out communications in the proper um, format or language so it's digest digestible, accessible, and what are solutions? Like that's like a whole wonderful day worth of discussion. Um, health programming. So I would love to see um, kind of like a review of our health programming, even just related to like we have Monterey County Rape Crisis Center come sporadically during our elementary years. I'm not sure if they come during middle school or if there's a different contractor that we use. Um, but I, I remember that being like, oh, it's like the odd number grade years and and thinking as a board member, why not every year, you know, and it's just teaching kids like, hey, um, you know, it, it's a it's grade appropriate health and safety for these students for these kids, you know, to, to, to kind of know like, hey, you can, you can say that you don't want to hug from your uncle or your aunt or your neighbor, you know, things like that, that are so important. Um, also, um, substance abuse, uh, or um, uh, how to navigate um, possible addictions and students like do we have that as a as a as a goal you know when, when the board talks about things that are specific at meetings the staff listens right like we all hear about it after a board meeting like oh man so you know the trustee so-and-so said this and the staff maybe they understood it maybe it was, you know, confused or whatever, but like the staff hears what we say. So like, it's really important for us to set forth the priorities. Um, communications, I will say this and I don't mean it in offense to anyone. Our communications are a nightmare. Um, so I'm really excited for us to review that and, and adjust it. Um, Brian, I hear what you're saying. They're like all over the place. Personally, I use, as a parent, because I have a parent in the district, I'm using this app that has been, you know, recommended to me. Um, I'm not going to say by who, because it's not the person's fault who recommended it, but it's a way that the school gives information to me about my student. And it's this free app. And I think they're, that the school is used to using it. So they're recommending it to me. Every time I open it, the app is like upgrade for $4.99 so that you can see when your message was read. And I'm thinking if I was a person who wasn't quite sure how, I, what I'm supposed to do, this has been recommended to me by my school. I might think I have to sign up and start paying. Like, come on, why aren't we using Parent Square? You know, like this is used in the two neighboring districts. Why, why isn't it? Um, anyways, okay. At the end, when we all finished this document, I did make a note that it sounded like the board agreed we wanted to run it through our cultural proficiency team. And I think that's really super important to like keep on the forefront so we remember. And that is my list. Thank you. Okay, so. <laughs> uh, it's 7.53. Janelle, please. Uh, just to, for so there's clear direction so that the Consensus of the board was to um, update this document, have it apply for at least the through the 24-25 school year, and direction to staff to um, work with that goal in mind. Is that accurate? Yes. 
And then the other um, action, I think, was to post it to the website. And not yeah, action, please. direction. Direction. Thank you so much. The other direction was to post it to the website and also um, email it out to the board. And Mr. Jordan, I would like to ask, when you email it out to the board, will you also attach our current LCAP? And then we can just kind of like, however we want to review that in a detailed way we can. Are there any other supporting documents board that you would like Mr. Jordan to include? Or Janelle, can you think of anything? No? Not after the, not at this point. Okay. Maybe the board goals, that one pager board goals, the strategic plan in its draft form that we worked on tonight and that current LCAP. And for Brown Act compliance, those will all be posted to the webpage, yes? Yes, absolutely. And actually some of them already are on there, but we're happy to put them on, on the, the board table that's there. Um, Could I must just a very small clarifying? I mean, positively. is putting them in the board in the minutes enough? Because I'm just wondering, like, no, it sounds like no. I guess what I'm just worried about is, like, I don't want to – I know we have to put them on the website, but this – getting at your point about communication is I want us to be careful that we're not just – throwing everything up there, if that makes sense, because I think anything that's, oops, sorry, anything that's given to the board has to be also given to the public. And the best way to do that is to add it to your website. And we do have a specific spot and maybe you might not know, Elliot, but you know, on the board page where it says like the link, the Zoom link, it gets added there. So it's not like every time someone logs in, they're like, whoa, why is the old cap? Whoa, what's this draft document? It's like, it's right. contained. No, I, I no, I do understand. I just thought the minutes might be a place to be like, oh, what do they work on today? But if that's not sufficient, I understand. Sure. Um, we can go around the board and see if there's any closing or a further comments. I know I just kind of dumped a lot of words on everybody. Um, Lewis, there's someone who has a comment or Lewis, do you have a comment? I would love to hear it. My other comment is kind of once again, relating back to not the goals, but the items within the goal is get staff feedback. Absolutely. So when, when you say, okay, technology distribution, I definitely want to give feedback on that kind of thing. Yeah. And if you may, if I may, um, absolutely. So the plan will be once we start getting into the initiatives to have staff present for public comment. Amazing. During that yes, please. Yeah. And like, please encourage that. Like we so want public comment on all these because yeah, I mean, and yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, um, we didn't feel it was important to have admin and staff here tonight because I, I was of the impression it was just a discussion about like yeah. a high level discussion, um, how we plan to, uh, you know, develop workflow, looking at the board goals only themselves, but moving forward, absolutely. We will make sure staff and admin are present. And I think that was a great decision for you to not have them here tonight. I mean, we... Yeah, they, it, when we can conserve staff time, absolutely do it. We trust you to, yeah. Speaking of child care, right? Yeah. Okay, so at 7.57, Elliot, did you have something? You didn't? I no, thought no, I, I saw you. No, was great, no. Okay. Um, I don't see any digital hands up, and it doesn't seem like any member of the public would like to make any comments. So with that, it's 7.57. Janelle, thank you so much for coming, for traveling. You're welcome. We appreciate it. And um, 7.57, meeting adjourned. <laughs>